Wait, wait. Are you? Man, I just I sound like that. Night up. Here we are again in the same seat we were in last year at the same time, wondering, news today? I don't expect it anymore. After going through Debo, George Kittle, Fred Warner, I don't expect these things. I don't expect anything anymore. I don't know about you, but I think we've all become hardened when it comes to this. We've become, as 49er fans, we've become hardened to a lot of things, haven't we? <laughs> I'm not saying anything about that end of the year, end of the season classic. I'm just saying... My God, when will things get better? But no bag, IU continues. Oh, B.A., 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 B.A. 49ers pros versus cons of signing Brandon IU following fifth-year option. Round one, draft 2024, fam. It's time to think about that. We've only got a couple more weeks before that takes place, you know. Not as usual, silence of staying publicly quiet about signing their star players. Is evolving as per usual. Media is going buck wild. Speculations are going on as if there were a contest as to who has their finger on the pulse of the San Francisco front office. Thinking, none of them ever do. They have no clue. One of the latest fan attractions, though, is that the Niners will wait until next season to sign Ayuk, as if he would be okay with that. I uh, I just get a kick out of people putting words into and thoughts into people's heads and minds. Brandon and I, you cannot accept a no deal, fam, for next. Uh, it's not going to happen. Also, the percentage of Niners supporters who want to see the team draft any other position other than an offensive lineman uh, must 0.5 versus 95% at best, right? However, in reality, that means absolutely nothing. 49 is going to do something we're not going to expect, as they always do. The SF Big Board most likely has a number of scenarios that – would send fans into <clears throat> a, a raging lynch mob anyway. You, you know what I mean? Can you imagine going in and taking a look at that board? What the? F Are you, you, you're not serious about this. Who? Oh my God, no. You know, Cause uh, you know, they have to put their computer spitting out those scenarios anyway. You know, uh, they feed that thing uh, certain data and the computer says, here's what you need. Going to the phones for your thoughts regarding April speculations, the Brandon IU contract. Also, are you uh, one of the Niner faithful that isn't all in for an OL first round 2024 draft pick? Please call in and explain. Big Show, you know I'm talking to you, right? <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta love Big Show, man. Big Show, come right into my heartbeat. No, I'm not interested in offensive linemen. We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. We're gonna say, Show. No. Yeah. So, I show you, know, I love you when you call that, man. Get in here, man. I tell you, I love you, stir the pot. Fam, I'm most observers don't necessarily believe BA should become the NFL's highest paid receiver, though. And, and I noticing from some of the comments I'm reading here, a lot of people don't believe that BA is the highest priced receiver in the league. Also, <clears throat> also it's worth noting that there haven't been any reports that BA is seeking that much money, though. He's not asking for the bank, not really. He's talking about being properly compensated for his services. No, I don't know what that means in his mind. I don't know what that means. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> You're, I see somebody say 10 to 15 mil. Come on now. You know, you know he can get at least 20. Minimum 20. That's his floor. Actually, 25 is right. Uh, Mike Florio, NBC Sports. And you know, I don't really like Mike Florio, but he makes a lot of sense uh, on this particular time. 32, 32 million, I don't know about that. This is a quote from Mike. Receivers are becoming more co commonplace in the NFL. I don't think Brandon Ayuk can get uh, to 30, at least not now. And there's value to him in letting uh, Vikings receiver Justin Jefferson and Bengals wide receiver Jamar Chase set the next bar, and then you try to come in somewhere underneath it. Oh, Mike, you don't know B.A.'s ego. I don't think if he sees him get 32 million, he's going to ask for at least 31 that's that's probably where he's going to stop because he knows it's possible. He could go to the Raiders. Let me see. What, what are some of the teams that are really digging out of the hole? Because I, I don't know what B.A. really worries about 
competing championships. I know he wants that, but I'm not sure if it comes to making a choice between the money and fame, which one is he going to go for? And status. Florida is speculating that the Niners may prefer to wait a year before signing Ayuk to a new contract, as if. <laughs> See, they can think about that all they want to. Last month, you'll remember, at the scouting combine, GM John Lynch stated that while the team is actively negotiating with Ayuk's representatives, it is, con- it is content uh, with allowing the receiver to play, or content with a lot, they are content with allowing uh, BA to play on a fifth year option. <laughs> But did you ask? Did you ask BA about that? Is he content? Would ask if I would be open to that scenario. Lynch responded, "Well, we'll, we'll see. You'd have to ask him that." Unquote. <laughs> Fam, is there anyone with an eye on this situation? Not aware of how emphatic B has been about this matter. He's been on various podcasts. He's made it clear that he's not playing. John, Kyle. He won't, he won't suit up this year. I already know it. Foyle continued saying that Lynch is currently sidestepping, what, what, what John is currently sidestepping. I think the Vikings, as much as they want to pay Justin Jefferson, I think the 49ers want to wait a year and then pay Brandon Ayuk. But they don't want to do it now. They may have to go ahead and do it now because he's clearly not thrilled with the current state of affairs, unquote. An understatement. <laughs> Honestly, B.A.'s livid about this because, you know, you get a receiver or any player that's just really laying the numbers up there, just doing a job. He could, He's done everything he's been asked to do and put a plus exclamation point on it. Now, you go, you go clown and jive around with paying me my money? You know they're going to go nuts. And I'm not sure if I wouldn't do the same. Uh, but waiting a year makes a little sense if the Niners intend to keep Ayuk around for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> Another big season... Uh, from BA will make that unlikely 30 uh, to 32 million necessary in 2025. See? I, how many times, I've cried every year about this. I said the 49ers are waiting until August to sign. Every person at that position, every player at that position will have signed before August. Why? Because other, other franchises are smart enough to know don't wait until the last guy signs so you'll need to beat that number. Damn it, Kyle. I, I, we, but we don't know it. Okay, uh, fam, here's the thing that's mind-staggering, though, is that Brock Purdy is on deck. His contract situation will be a significant storyline next season. Oh, see, we already know. So just sit back, relax, accept it. You know it's coming. The Niners will be putting themselves behind that eight ball and contract hell with a disgruntled wide receiver while in talks with Brock, who is set to become the team's highest paid player. Do the math on that, fam. Let's, let's say, <clears throat> what are you going to give Brock? He's, got, he's better than Dak Prescott. I got to pay him more than Dak Prescott. Dak's talking about $50 million. I, you know what? Dak's in 40 now. I got to give him at least 45. I've got to give Brock pretty at least 45. I got to give him some incentives to get him over 50. He's going to get more endorsements. Everybody loves him. He's America's favorite quarterback. He's already getting money from the NFL. NFL's with Brock. You did too good of a job. We're going to pay you, and we're going to pay also uh, your, your fellow uh, cornerback, Diablo Lenore. 49ers sit back watching him getting endorsements and tracker deals. and They're going to sell that to him, too. Brock, you're, you're, you're the football darling of, of, of the NFL right now. You don't say much. You sit around. You don't, all you do is go out there and get your job done. Hell, we'll, you, you know what we're paying is going to be pocket change what you're going to be making anyway. Like, can you give me $45 million and call it a day? We're give you some, let's give you $7 million in incentives. You get to the Pro Bowl. You get to the uh, Super Bowl. You pass for 4,000 yards. Uh, you know, 40,000 uh, 4, 4, yards. We're going to give you at least, you'll be making at least $52 million. Sound good? And also we'll be able to try and keep people around you, which is very important, as you know, for us to continue to prosper as a football team. See, I, you know, I, I, everybody knows how to go in and sell somebody on how to, how to help us out here, right? It's not, it's not that tough. It's not rocket science. We do have rocket scientists on our team, but so what? <laughs> Coach Shannon has already gone on record stressing the importance of keeping IU and Purdy together. Kyle is good for lip service. The, uh, the two have developed good on field chemistry. Every by career years for both players last season with IU amassing a team leading <clears throat> 1,342 uh, receiving yards and Purdy throwing a, a single-season franchise record. 
Better than in Legends. It'd be Joe and Steve. <laughs> There's already speculation that he could be a legendary player at the point uh, at the end of his season, at the end of his career. He's got the makings. You just got to keep the equipment around him to work with. Coach Shannon, coach. I mean, it's hard to be successful quarterback if you don't have real good receivers. So it starts there with Brandon. I think that's real big for Brock in his future, making sure we got a good group uh, for him to going forward. So you can always see the selling line coming. Brock, we got to keep good players around you, all right? Now here's what we're going to do. The table is set, fam. The pressure cooker in Santa Clara is about to explode if that valve isn't opened up in just a bit. Bam! What are they going to do, fam? That's the question tonight. This situation could seriously affect the draft, too. In my own personal opinion, fam, and this wide receiver, uh, Rich Draft, wide receiver, and I show, I know you can appreciate this, versus OL, could be real in round one, fam. The 49ers' backs against the wall, they don't have any place to go. You're going to pay $70 million next year between Brandon and Ayuk? And Brock Purdy? I don't think so. Things could explode on draft night, fam. The Niners can get a minimum of a second-round pick for B.A. What are you going to do is my question. What are you going to do, fam? What are you going to do? Well, they could pick another player and trade him on draft night. But you're not going to keep two of these guys together for $70 million dollars owing other people money on the roster as it is. Mathematically, you know how we always talk about how Parag Marathi and all those guys are so good at manipulating numbers that they can make anything happen. They're not making this happen, fam. I just don't believe it. If I got to see it to believe it, I just don't believe it. <laughs> That's a big shout out. You kidding me? I'm dying for an O-line fixing from center on right. I do um, a bucket to Ayuk and trade him for a high pick to get the best right tackle of center at 31 and leg it with our second round pick. And by the way, a show, the Niners address the old line is a popular first round scenario in most mock drafts. The last time the team used a first round pick on an offensive lineman was in 2018. And you know how that worked out, right? Matt Burrows, the Atlantic unveiled his seven round 49ers dra uh, mock draft projecting the team's choices with each of their selections. I trust Matt's wisdom. In fact, both Bay Area Matt's uh, I, I, I look at them with high praises. Sharp guys, and they know this regime well, and they've been right with them since day one, right? Barrels aligns with the prevalent scenario of addressing the offensive line. We all want an offensive line. For God's sakes, you're not going to get anything done with a quarterback laying in the dirt all day. He has a Niners selecting former Georgia offensive tackle and Marius Mims with the first pick. Here's a twist on that. Barrels doesn't anticipate the Niners selecting Mims with the number one, number 31 overall pick. Considering the possibility that Big Mims could easily be off the draft boards before pick 31. If he's any good, you and I both know that's going to be the case. Ain't no good offensive lineman wait till the end of the first round. And who needs an offensive lineman more than we do? Trent Williams has two years of high-level play at the most. He could be an exception to the rule. He might, be, he might be a freak. He could go to his 40. There's been others that did that, but I don't want to see that. With that in mind, Barrels proposes that San Francisco, uh, the, uh, the San Francisco trades up to acquire Mrs. Mims, six foot eight, <laughs> three hundred forty pound, <laughs> beat down machine, baby boy. It cost me the team's first round pick, number thirty one. All right, show. I know you love this. A pair of fourth rounders. We don't need those. We don't need those. You're not gonna. You're not gonna make this team anyway. One twenty four, one thirty two, and next year's third rounder to move up to the Miami Dolphins selection, number twenty one. I say that's not high enough. I got 10 picks. I don't need all them damn picks. I need four or five picks. Get rid of all of them. And the big on uh, the first 20 selection and four other options at that spot might include Oklahoma's Tyler Guyton and Arizona's Jordan Morgan. Uh, Arizona, uh, Jordan Morgan. Nonetheless, Mims remains Barrow's choice at that position. His size is impressive. A glaring concern in, uh, in his collegiate uh, resume, though, is the lack of experience with just eight career starts with the Bulldogs. That's not good, but you know what? Here's the thing. I, I worry about raw products coming in, uh, especially at a, at a position of need like this. Huge, huge need. 
Mims might benefit, though, from not having to start immediately observing, uh, learning, and preparing to take over one of the two tackle spots, potentially step again for twin, Trent Williams one year. And I give him two years. I know we need a right tackle. <laughs> you know, this is the thing. We didn't know that we had a, another quarterback when we picked Brock, Brock Purdy. Just roll the dice, roll the dice, get another right tackle, pick another tackle in the draft. You know, don't come out of that draft without two or three offensive linemen. The other two don't, I know you know what they're going to be. They have to tell you, a wide receiver's on the list, though, I guarantee you. And it could be a possibility in the first round. The 49ers know damn well that if Ben Ayuk pushes the envelope, he's going to have to be a problem. He's going to be a problem. Matt Belize says, quote, Mims uh, certainly could compete with Colt McKivitz at right tackles as a rookie, but he would, wouldn't have to be thrown into the uh, fire right away like he might if another team took him. He also could spend the rookie season apprenticing behind the best left tackle in the game, unquote. Now here's where Herbero's got me, though. Uh, thinking about it, if B.A.'s camp starts with the he won't set foot on the field without a contract extension, <laughs> I'm telling you, look for it, fam. B.A. will lose face, and he and he's the kind of guy that, Ben, listen, we've decided we're not going to, we don't want to further negotiate this year's contract. We'll go ahead and, 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 and hopefully you'll play on that fifth-year option. Well, hopefully y'all wrong because I ain't playing on no fifth-year option. To Brent, listen, you know, it's not going to behoove you to sit down this season because you need to keep yourself out there so people can see it. If for nothing else next year, you can go negotiate and write your own ticket. But listen, if you're going to sit down, you're, you're not helping yourself or us. And, and that, that conversation is going to go on for, like, until September. I look, I, Brandon and Iuke is going to trot back on the field somewhere in October. I don't need that. <clears throat> With seven more draft picks, Barrels has a team selected former Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi, Malachi Corley in the second round and former Kentucky cornerback Andrew Phillips in the third round. Show these names sound familiar to you. Is Malachi worth a damn? <laughs> he also proposed a team select former Rice wide receiver Luke McCaffrey, CMC's brother in the fifth round. Barrels won't. I, and Luke, he'd find a player who only recently transitioned to wide receiver from, but managed 992 yards and 13 touchdown, touchdowns last season. He also has at least some experience returning punts, a position of need for the Niners, unquote. Boy, we got some issues, don't we? They're not big. There are big issues. If we're going to compete next year, though, it's going to take some stuff that I'm not sure we're going to be able to find, Bam. Bar- uh, Barrels has the Niners adding a defensive end, another offensive lineman, a tight end. Because, you, you know, we lost Brock Wright, right? Yeah, Lions. Y'all ain't getting <laughs> Your eyes may shine, your teeth may grit. Niners, Brock Wright, you ain't never going to get. Signed him. Match that offer. And, and pretty much running back uh, will probably be uh, the 49ers do that every year. Wide receiver running back. They do that every year. Okay, fam, come on in here and talk to me. What are you thinking here? I mean, the Brock, Brock I, Brandon Ayuk situation? Draft, what are you going to do? Oh, it's, if you think about it all the time, you, boy, you, you'll develop all kind of stomach problems. Hey, uh, Jack, come on in here, man. <laughs> Jack, 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 I love the intro. I, I, who is that? Just unlike, unlike Diddy, Ayuk ain't going nowhere. <laughs> ain't going you like nowhere. Diddy? <laughs> unlike, unlike Diddy, unlike Diddy, Brandon Ayuk ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. He can't be stopped now. Okay. Now, you're now how do you propose finish, to keep him? Finish that. Okay. It's bang bang nine or for life, but. <laughs> He ain't going anywhere. I was the first to tell all of y'all last year and I said, listen, this guy's going to be a top five wide receiver. And he was. And if he would have played the last game, he would have beat out my guy, George Pickens, for the number one yard per catch. But as we know, we didn't play against the Rams. Purdy wasn't in there. But I'm going all out to tell you this, Rombo. He is going to be the 2020s best route runner. Of the of, of the decade, he's going to be amongst the best, the top three best route runners of the 2020s. You know what I'm saying? Like Richard Sherman was uh, uh, the uh, top cornerback uh, of the tens, and he ain't going nowhere, bro. He ain't going nowhere. We're keeping we're keeping him. We're going to find a way to pay him. It's going to be fine, just like we got. Okay, wait, 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 time out, right the there. Same that's, thing that's, happened with Debo. I, I just want you to pause right there. We're going to find a way to pay him. Jack, 
we're going to find a way to pay them. How? And just, the give, give me a little is, structure on that. Just let me know. The, I just want to know. What, how is that going to be possible? Well, well, with, with, with incentives, with signing bonuses, but main thing, main reason is because our, we got Brock Purdy for another couple years in his rookie deal. That's how. And then when it comes time to pay Purdy, by that time we're going to figure out which one do we keep out of these two. And if you guys listen to Jack, we get an Xavier Worthy just down the road from Modesto, uh, you know what I'm saying, who I said would beat out uh, uh, John Ross's 40 time, or we get a, a Troy Franklin from EPA just down the road from Modesto in the Bay. Uh, and one of these two are going to be like the next Deshaun Jackson. So you get a guy like that in, in the building as well and, and learn from these two and Juwan Jennings. And, hey, there's no telling what, what, what can happen. But in the meantime, we're going to find a way to pay him. You know, like you mentioned, Parag is the man at this. <laughs> and they're, they're going to do, they're going to handle, handle their business. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot but, of uh, um, Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Because it, but going I mean, to the draft, I'm just looking at his. I'm looking. I'm looking at everybody else who's already signed. We have now, uh, uh, you know, those Hollywood parties where you know the A-listers show up. We we have a team of A-listers. I don't know if we can extend on yep. that. I'm trying to understand how in the world the math is going to. F- that's that's a hundred. I'm looking at. Oh my God, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, and we're going to shock the world. But, but on the flip side, if we don't get a wide receiver in the first round, I don't mind us going all in on the defense, even the first three rounds, to just get a crazy-ass defense come playoff time when these rookies start activating. Okay, I don't, I don't even got to think no more. I just react. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't mind us getting a badass defensive tackle because they might slip to us. The best one might slip to us. Uh, a cornerback. You know, uh, even a linebacker, uh, another edge, lot two, lot two, my fault. We don't know. But, I mean, I don't mind going all in on the defense and going crazy because, uh, you know, the, what I see, what, what, what Shanahan said, Rombo, was, you know, with the offensive line, oh, oh, we're fine there. If that offensive line and that team with Brock Purdy got us to the Super Bowl, they're only going to gel even better come following year. I, I've thought about that. What's your that's, take on that? Yeah, no, I've thought about it. That's true. You know, continuity is built with an offensive line. They're like a basketball top five guys. They've got to work together for a while. I, I, do you think McKivitz has what it takes, though, no matter how hard he works? Is he going to get good enough to be able to stop that right side? Because teams are just – the, oh, D.C.'s already planning. Listen, we're not worried about Trent Williams because that's just unnecessary. Let's go around another side and put as much pressure as we can. Uh, George Kittle will be coming at you there, but that's pretty much, pretty much as they, much as they can do. See, I I don't I don't want to see Kittle working like that. I want to see him going out for passes. I like to see a right uh, side offensive lineman. They can let George Kittle go out there and destroy teams like Travis Kelsey does. Well, if he got us to the Super Bowl this year, Rombo, again, like what you just said, uh, it's just going to get better this year. It's going to be easier for him. He knows our players. He knows the play calls. He knows how this and that works as a starter caliber uh, 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 in the Super Bowl, you know, against the best team uh, in the world, uh, uh, Chiefs, supposedly, who got our ass twice. So, you know, I'm not worried about that at all. And, uh, yeah, so, so, so again, I, I don't mind us getting uh, another defensive player. And it's going to be fine because, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll tell you what John Lynch will do is he'll trade a second-round pick next year to get somebody, a team that's slipping, so we could have a right tackle or if it's a right guard or center that we need to trade uh, uh, midseason um, and uh, get, get, get the job done before the deadline. What I don't want to see, man, is that one that got away. That one that got away Every when year. it came to our rookie kicker. That rookie kicker uh, uh, missed that kick. Moody missed that kick, which we would have won the, won the Super Bowl, right? Uh, but but then again, you would go back and say, oh well, Kansas City would would have gone for it on fourth down at the six yard line. Uh, 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 so 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 what I don't want is 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 to like have Shanahan or uh, Lynch shock us during the draft and get like a punter or or or, 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 or we, we we you know what I'm saying we we already got a punter and a kicker. Yeah. I mean the, the the heart the heart attack situation, Rombo, is they turn around and get the best. 
uh, a punt snapper, uh, uh, the Ball snapper, snapper? Uh, no, in, in, in college football. In college football, that is, that, no. that's going to be the dagger. Our, that's going to be the dagger in the heart. Our guy's fine. Our guy's fine. <laughs> Jack, we got to go. I'm going to do what I want. But I'm yeah, a, I'm, I'm looking for you. Uh, you know what? If something goes crazy tomorrow, I'll be back tomorrow. But otherwise, I'll see you uh, this weekend. Hey, hey, hey. Before, before I go, though, before I go, Mel Kuyper Jr., like I told you about Xavier Worthy, you know, I like to call it uh, uh, like a bad alcoholic, but I told you about Xavier Worthy beating uh, John Ross in 40 times. I told you guys at the same time, guys, real quick, fun fact, that uh, TJ Tampa, if we trade back in the second round, and, and Brandon Fisk, the defensive tackle at Florida State, would be great fits for us. And now Mel Kuyper Jr., since I said that, has T.J. Tampa in the first round. And uh, 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 Larry Kruger has us taking Brandon Fisk. Check that out, y'all. It's All your right. boy. And big. if we would have listened to Big Show last year and got the offensive tackle from Ohio State who went to the Browns, hey, man, we wouldn't have this problem. Uh, uh, with our right tackle at all. But, hey, I, I'm cool nice. like Kyle Shanahan. When it comes <laughs> right, to that. Checking in, your boy. Indeed. Have a great day out there in the UK. All right, Jack. Good day, fam. Unlike Diddy. <laughs> Point out, Brian says Brock Wright owes us a check. Well, did he get paid? He didn't get, he didn't get, did he get paid? I think they, they put a hold on that until uh, the final deal is signed. I'm pretty sure that was pretty funny. Brock gets over there and, I already spent some of that money, guys, because you guys didn't tell me you were coming. Get a call me. <laughs> well, damn it, Brock. We'll take care of it. <clears throat> and there he is, the leader of the Dragon Clan. He is Papa Drangle. Ah, Pop, get in there, man. <clears throat> What's up, Rombo? What's up, production? What's oh. up, Niner Nation? <laughs> and a few haters. What's up? Pop, you know we're sitting there watching the drama unfold and wondering what's going to happen next. You know, ask, if there's anything fun about the 49ers, you can sit there and read all, watch the previews and and read the everything you can, whatever's going to happen before the movie starts. And then when it starts, damn, I didn't expect that. And it's not always usually with a smile on your face. But you you got a situation here. I'm 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 thinking the 49ers pull off these miracles when they sign people every year, but this miracle ain't happening, uh, Pop. I don't, you may think so, and Brock. Uh, pretty. That's an idea. Jack just brought up. You don't sign Brock until the year after next. Well, what do you think about these things? Well, I mean, ultimately, the 49ers have leverage. Oh, the players yeah. don't have leverage. 49ers have all the leverage in the Always. world. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, 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 you know, they're hard, nego- they're hard negotiators. Um, I, I truly believe that uh, Brandon and I, you, he definitely deserves a bag, but but let's just keep it 100. <clears throat> you know, Nikola had 169 targets last year. Brandon Ayuk had 100 targets. He's got butterfingers. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> whatever the case is, um, I, it's you can make the argument both ways, but let's make no mistake about it. Who is the real question? Is does the 49ers, do they, they get better by moving on from IU? No. That's the question. No, they don't. They don't get better. Uh, they get worse, right? Because you, rec- you lose a receiver and you lose <laughs> yeah. a valuable blocker. Right. Right? He, he, he so played a role like and played it well. Have someone, yeah, we, 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 it's not like they have somebody. Detroit wing to everybody. You guys can let Brock stay with San Francisco too. You're greedy. You're going to get beat for that reason. Okay, go ahead, Bob. <clears throat> right, 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 right. So, in any particular case, I mean, the, the main concern right now is you're coming off of a, of a Super Bowl loss that you had every opportunity to win despite obstacles put in front of you, including some of those obstacles being self inflicted. They weren't overwhelming. They just blew. Right? Yep. So, there's no way, it, the way I see it, that you move on from IU this year, right? Are they foolish enough to do it in the, the year after that? Well, that depends. That depends on this draft. And that depends on Shanahan. And that's why I don't think it's likely. Here's why. It doesn't matter who the 49ers take in this draft. They could take the top offensive tackle in this All draft, right. right? So let's say they take J.C. Latham. Is he going to start? 
I don't know. But, Does he know Shanahan's system? Pop, hold on just yeah. a second. Yeah, when you call in, please don't don't push the uh, the unmute. Leave it on mute. We'll bring you in as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. All right, go ahead, Pop. So, so, so the question is: Is, is the, does Shanahan uh, play rookies with potential, or does, or does he play rookies because he has no choice, or does he wait and play rookies until they're ready to play, which is they they learn the systems, they get their bodies right, and things like that? My answer is probably a little bit of all of it, but the real one is probably answer C most of the times that these rookies don't see the light of day. They just mm. don't get on the field, and oftentimes they get traded. Yeah, it's so, a complicated offense. Isn't it? I don't see yeah. it. Well, that's his fault. Uncomplicated. It's football. Oh, 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 it's football, and, then, and right now, yeah. you can uncomplicate it. Didn't D'Amico Ryan's uncomplicated? Apparently. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Texas are rolling. Right, so, oh. so, so the point I'm trying to make is, is that you know we can hate on Shanahan, love on Shanahan, but the, you know the results are the results. The results are that he's he's been awesome in the regular season, and he gets to the to the big games, and he starts to falter. So, and a big part of that is depth. And how are you going to have depth if you don't develop your players behind and get them on the field to play, mm. right? So that's why the, the draft itself, which we all know is a crapshoot. Like I, mm. I, I put out some numbers the last time we spoke where literally mm. like 12% of draft picks work out. Mm-hmm. But a big part of that is making sure you try to get players with the most talent. That's why you, you don't reach for a tackle because you, re- you need a tackle in the first round, right? Because if you reach for a tackle in the first round and they don't work out, guess what? You just blew in the first round pick. Yep. Get the best player at the best position possible for your team, whether you need them or not. That gives you a better chance of building and keep and maintaining a strong team moving forward. Now, the Niners have done it in such an unconventional way, focusing on the defensive line, uh, you know, really hitting some home runs in those late round draft picks has been absolutely huge for them. And I'm telling you right now, based on what I'm seeing in this draft, I think after about six. 14 or 15, you know, for the next two rounds, all those players are very similar. So the, the real reason it's grouping is, is what players out there can do more <clears throat> than what than what a normal player at that position can do. That's going to be the key for the 49ers right now because they have, like, a lot of little mini knees. They need a kick return, right? So if you get a good kick return, shouldn't they get on the field that year? You see what I'm saying? It's like yeah. there's stuff like that that they have to start considering. Not to mention, you get a kick returner, and then he's training to be a receiver, right? So in a couple of years down the road, he's ready to challenge for a, a bigger role as receiver, right? Because remember, John Taylor was a kick returner. Tim Brown was a kick returner, okay? Tyree Hill was a kick returner. It was a was scary a kick returner, yes. I remember that. people has got to be the kick returner. You know, he had to learn how to be a receiver. So, like, yeah. so you've got you to gotta try to get Get the talent that you need to get. You can't spend your way in a in a cap situation to a Super Bowl, in my opinion, unless you go out and get a bona fide, like five star quarterback, right? And Purdy ain't a five star quarterback. Not an NFL quarterback. He's a very very good quarterback, right? But you still have to deal with situations where Purdy can't necessarily make those wild throws consistently. And he's still small, and he still has a bad offensive line. And you can't fix the offensive line in this draft unless you're – there's one guy that I can see that you could draft. If you draft J.C. Latham out of Alabama, he could start for the 49ers. But guess what? He can't start for the 49ers unless he knows the system. Because we don't know how smart this guy is. We don't know how well – we don't know what kind of doghouse Kyle Shanahan have built for him. You don't know. And he'll put you in there, he, too. Kyle Shanahan likes – his system, and he likes comfortability. He's comfortable with McKibbins, despite the fact that McKibbins gave up 13 sacks last year. I wonder if he's really comfortable right? with McKibbins. <laughs> or, or is it that kind of thing where you look in the cupboard, you need mayonnaise and mustard, and all you got is mustard. You know, I, I, I think Kyle just right. <laughs> tries to make do with him. It's the same thing with Ayuk. If Ayuk makes a big stink, only thing his big stink's going to do at this point is going to hurt the team, and it's going to hurt him. So the best thing he can do is probably play on his fifth-year option because no matter what happens, Ayuk's going to get a bag if he wants it. He'll get the bag. It may not be from the 49ers, but he'll get a bag. See? 
But the real question is, as a team, who do you have behind him that is pushing him to get on the field? And the yeah. problem is nobody. nobody. That's the See biggest that, problem right now is nobody. Yeah, there it is. Pop, we, we, we got to stop. Well, I tell you, we, we, Pop, you, we, we need to get you in here. You want to do a, uh, a draft this year? Sure. Right, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll get back with I'll you on that. that. All right. Yeah. Actually, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see you this weekend, and uh, let's continue. <laughs> Always making good pops. Yeah, Papa sure. Dragon, of, uh, uh, the king parent of the house that includes Bam and Boom and Mama Dragon. Pop, appreciate you, fam. Talk to you in a minute. Yeah, man. Give my, give, give, we'll talk to you, man. Give my big shout out to the big show and production. I'm out. <laughs> All right, fam. What about big shout out to 49 and Brian there, Papa? What's up with that? <laughs> neglect. Dude, neglect, dude, Papa. 49 and Brian, hey, <laughs> huge shout out to you, man. So I'm going to add you to the mental list. You're added to the mental list. Official, brother. I, I freaking love you, and Papa. I hope, I hope that we agree. I hope that we disagree. But as long as we do respect, they ain't nothing but love here. Hey, we're 49 and Brian. Damn straight, Bubba. Uh, I'm right here. Papa, I love the Papa. <laughs> what up, Bravo? Brian, hey, Brian. You know, I tell you, man. I, I, uh, I as I sat back, I'm almost, I've almost become comfortable, and every, a lot of us are, co- are confident that BA is going to sign. But I do see him. His arrogance is going to be. I told y'all, if I don't work this out, he put the little, little foot walking right. I don't think he's going to play. I think he'll sit out. I really do. Until maybe week Rambo, five I or think six. The 40, yeah, I think the 49ers are in the driver's seat, Rambo, but I hope it's not a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did there. Yeah. I see what you did. No, you know, okay. That's, yeah. And see, that's going to be a distraction. There's all kind of reasons why Brandon and I, you cannot get mad. He's got to understand. But football players could get hurt any time, Brian. He could go out there and maim himself. First play like Aaron Rodgers last year. And, oh, God. Well, let's see. These, these things happen. It's football. It's a violent game. It's scary. Players get torn apart all the time. And that's what B.A.'s thinking. I'm going to get my money now before it gets too late, right? So they're all going to think like that, and I can't Rumble. get mad at him for that, you know? But is he worth $30 million? I don't think so. I agree. You know, I, Most of the receivers getting then, paid that money aren't worth that much. Nah. And here's the, the other question. Who in their right mind is going to want – Brandon Ayuk at what the 49ers want for him. See? And also give the 49ers draft capital. So that's why I figured this. I said, you know what? 49ers, we're gonna, I'm going to take a second round pick. Well, we're not giving you a second round pick. Well, nope. about next year's too. Well, I, no. Here, let, 49ers, we'll give you a fourth round pick. We're going to have to pay him, and you won't. So, I mean, this is the deal. And I said, you know, this is really a rock and a hard place. I, we got to play Brock Purdy. Brian, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, I, I'm venting. Go ahead. No, I love it. But here's the thing. I think the 49ers are just doing the right thing. Let him be a drama queen. Let him talk all his smack. Like, and just wait out the summer. I mean, the only one that's stressing out is Brandon Ayuk right now, I think. Wouldn't you say, Brad? Well, there, Rombo? I, I, don't, I don't think the 49ers don't want this heat. I mean, they really would like to have this resolved. It, it, it's going to be bothersome. I mean, Kyle's got some things he wants to work on and what's, what he wants to do. He's got a, a, a role that he wants Brandon Ayuk to play. And who's he going to get to do it now? So, you because know, Kyle's a very. Rambo, we have. Rambo, we got 11 picks. 11 I picks. So I told you, draft night, there could be a trade made. And whatever receiver, first round pick, the 49ers have drafted back up in the first round. They got two first round picks at this point. Uh, they take wide receiver uh, Malachi. You know, I, 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 see, guys, we talked about this in March. Or April. And I says, you know what? I, watch out for draft night. But Brian, go ahead. Go ahead. Rombo, if I'm Brandon Ayuk, I'm going to just shut up and quit talking shit and just let it play out. Let the 49ers do their thing like they do every summer to us poor fans. Yeah. And I'm sure a deal or something will be worked out. But Brandon Ayuk is not going to get 25 to $30 million a year. There's just no way. And he knows that. I hope so. You know. Yeah. Debo's in his ear, that's why. You know, <laughs> you know, and the thing is, he's got, uh, Ben and you can, these guys are smart for him. Brian, this is the thing. They're, they probably got guys running around testing things, asking questions, finding out 
Where is and who is paying money? Scheming. I, They're all schemers. I know. I, <laughs> the Vikings would pay him. Uh, and right now, you know, might be else might be Buffalo might be prime. You well, know, Buffalo. They just lost their big dog, didn't they? Yes, and that's going to give that's ramifications calls all around the league, and it especially affects our guy. So you know, if I'm the Niners, I'm talking to the Bills right now saying, hey, I want some draft picks for Brandon oh, Ayuk. And and, and, it, and also, I, as Tony Nagatani points out, the Chiefs. Brian, the <laughs> Chiefs are all over this, and they're monitoring the situation on a daily basis. You watch and see if we don't hear that name come up soon because they tried to get digs. They did. You and, mean, and, and the Buffalo Bills says no. <laughs> Are the the, the do us a number every year. Kansas yeah. City next year? Oh, man. <laughs> but you know, Buffalo is the smart thing. We wow. should do the same thing to Brandon. Brandon, listen, you're not making any deals with the Chiefs, okay? You can go anywhere you want, but you're not going to the Chiefs to talk, all right? Because it's not going to happen. We're not making no deal with the Kansas City Chiefs. Nobody should be. Bravo. The league should stick together. Do not help the Chiefs. They're depending on their defense more than ever right now. Let them remain vulnerable. Because as long as they don't have that offense clicking, they're beatable. Rambo, I always bring this up to you. How come we never use a franchise tag anymore? I know, right? When was the last time we used it? I don't remember. Do I don't, you remember? I do not. I'm thinking, when's the last time the 49ers don't believe in using any franchise tag? There's a lot of clubs like that. I mean, we have so much, so many players that are owed big money. At this point, I think, wouldn't they be in their best interest to use it on Brandon Ayuk? Yeah, but you never can. You never can. You can never backpedal. I mean, you can't. You can't go backwards next year. Okay, we're giving you. Uh, <clears throat> what's? Well, I don't know what the standard rate is, but they can't go I back next either. year and give less, right? So it puts you in a position no. now where you're never going to be able to afford him because you have to franchise tag him for two years and let him go. That sucks. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, he's just getting better and better every year, isn't he? he? Is. He's he's almost kind of. That's a good I mean, player. He's he's kind of worth the money, and then it's like, well, we're gonna go on major debt if we do, right? Yeah, I, it's, I, I, I didn't worry about that as much as I'm. How are you gonna play Brock Purdy and Brandon Ayuk back to back like this, or at That's the same what time? I'm, I'm leading to. But will Brock Purdy? What will Brock Purdy command next year? That's you know. Uh, if he has a good and, year as he did this year, he has his agent's gonna say, "Listen, uh, Brock says you can, whatever you guys can afford." I'm telling you right now. 45 is my bottom line. I'm not budging, guys. And I know they're going to say that. Rob, and, and what if we sign Ayuk and we win the Super Bowl this year? What's going to yeah. happen with Kittle and Debo next year? It's, <laughs> it's a big mess. <laughs> the price of success, Brian. This is why you know, I know. This, we should have appreciated when we were getting our butts kicked every year because we were building a monster. <laughs> and now... Do we want to go? Do we want to go back to the years of... No. Dennis Erickson and, no, and uh, that I, horrible mess? Absolutely not. <laughs> but the thing is, we, we didn't look ahead and notice that our smiles and happy days, I was running around saying, happy days are here, happy days, happy days, have, <laughs> are now, they've got, a, they've got a date on them, and they might expire. I, next two years, uh, Brian, some things are going to get crazy. I just know it. it it's going to be the weirdest history probably – that the 49ers have ever had these next couple of years, I think. And I've been through it all with my 49ers. I've seen it all, but this is, this This is is something epic. You know, this is crazy. The cap. So cap is hard to work with. Brian, let's, let's, let's call. I'm I'm, 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 going to be back. uh, Depending on Brandon signs tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Robbo, I got to also say what a week for George Kittle. Holy cow. He, that man was just everywhere on TV. Did you see all that? Not all of it. Uh, I've been busy, so I've been able well, to check out Well, he's at the, the women's uh, uh, Final Four, and then he was at WrestleMania oh, yeah. tonight cheering on Bailey. And you knew he would. Bailey's from San Jose. Yep. So it was, the, that was the, pretty cool. And he was uh, he was in Iowa. Wait, wait who was playing in the uh, la- the ladies' uh, basketball? T- um, Kate, what's, uh, what's uh, her name? I think South Carolina, right? Didn't they win? They beat uh, Iowa, I, I do believe. It was Iowa, yeah. So George had to be picking Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he the, totally was. 
Yeah. And, and, and you know, Debo was was sending them little nasty messages on Twitter. I was loving it. <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> sure they were going back and forth. Uh, but Rumble, hey, you have a good night, and I uh, appreciate the the uh, forum and everything. And I love my fam, you, and and uh, you you have a good night, okay, sir? Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it so much. I'll see you later on. All right. All right. All right. Bye. <coughs> Bailey is a bandwagon fan. <laughs> Paul <laughs> Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin Clark, well, well. I know Caitlin Clark. They, they, she goes to South Carolina, I guess. No, she's in Iowa. Ah, no, she's Iowa. Iowa, they, Iowa lost. <laughs> yep. No, they won. Yeah, Iowa lost. Ooh, what is that Latino girl that plays the Brazilian girl? Was she on? She's in South Carolina, huh? I, anyway, we could get. I in. think so. Yeah, that was amazing. All right, I'll get back to you in a minute. Let's see what Matty. Matty S up in Bend, Oregon. What's up, bro? Matty, man, you know, it's, I don't know why we talk about this because it just makes me give me, gives me a headache. Because <clears throat> I, no, was on, me a huge headache. I, I was I was I was disillusioned to think that we were going to be able to sign. <clears throat> if you look at the finances here and look at how many players we already have under contract that are getting huge salaries, I don't know. Unless Brock Purdy's not getting paid next year, how in hell are they going to sign? You know, put a spin on where are we going with this? And also in the draft, what do you expect for <laughs> draft night? Oh, I'm just I'm still hoping for an offensive. Some, I'm hoping for something on the offensive line. Um, but man, you know, I keep thinking about it, dude. And you know, every year we struggle with something. You know, it's always something different each year. You know, and then we look into the future about what it's going to be in the future. And it's like, man, I don't know. I just, I don't think, I think regardless of whether we get rid of Brandon Ayuk or we keep Brandon Ayuk, obviously we would downgrade a little bit. But at the same time, like, it seems like we draft pretty well. So yeah, that's one thing that maybe we nice. find something. Yeah, yeah so I'm just, I'm just going to keep my head up, you know, keep optimistic, dude. I'm trying to, trying to harness my chill pill fill. <laughs> You know, we just lost. You know? We I, you were going to find out this year if we just lost a guru of of draft. Uh, you know, I, if John Lynch and company can still pull in some blue chip ball players out of the draft, I'll relax. I, That's I've been, yeah, yeah. We we obviously we have a team built around a lot of it. I mean, look at the roster we've got now. It's a good team. It's there's a, there's good a handful team. of them. There's some good players on that team. They're drafting every year pretty good, pretty good, yeah. always pretty good. Well, and there's a handful of the players that we've got. They weren't first-rounders. Yeah. Uh, they play like them. They do, don't they? We Actually, we've not received – name a first-rounder besides Nick Bosa that you've been real happy with <laughs> since Kyle Shannon and John Lynch uh, took over. You mean that we've drafted? Yeah. Oh, Ayuk. Thanks, Tony. Ooh. Ayuk. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, the only first, I don't, damn. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, so we don't need to I've start in the first I've round of 49ers. Yeah, we need to start in the second round. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> our first round drafting ability hasn't been the greatest. But what you get a lot of times, you get a lot of overhyped dudes in the first round. Thank you. I've noticed that years ago. I said, you know what? <clears throat> Guys are getting a lot of hype, <clears throat> and they got a lot to live up to. Yeah. The, especially quarterbacks. Oh, my God. God. Oh, biggest percentage of flops out of the first round, man. Like, you either really are really good at it or you're just not. And everybody knows of those every don't make first the transition. round quarterback pick right now, they're all household names already. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've never seen yeah, Bo Nix play. And I mean, they're talking about him like crazy. Caleb is the, the, the second coming since Jesus. I am saying, you know, these kids <laughs> you guys are it's talking tough, about. He's from Oregon. He plays for Oregon, so yeah, I'm – I kind of have a part. I'm kind of partial to him, man, because I've played. I've seen him play a bunch. Because I'm, I'm an Oregon Duck fan. So is he, is he going to do well? In he, the was, he was lighting it up. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. Like I don't. Herbert was a duck. I know, right? Herbert's not bad. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with Herbert. His situation. Herbert is a good quarterback. I don't know what's wrong with the, he, he the plays Chargers. for San Diego. That's the problem. <laughs> 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 You know he'd do better. You know he'd do better in Shanahan's system than he is where he's at. Well, he's he's got Harbaugh out. Harbaugh's going to going to win the ball and uh, take True. some pressure off. True, of him. that might change the whole scenario. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. See, I 
I keep forgetting about that. So actually, I'm kind of I'm kind of excited to. I'd like to, you know, I mean, it's just you know, when you watch someone and you know, on your college favorite college team play for so many years, it's hard not to root for him. Yeah. You know, like Mariota, I wanted to see him do so much more. He's yeah, just such I, a good he's dude. Such a cool guy. Just, there's just no problems anywhere, man. Like he just. But I'm happy for him at the same time, you know, because he was a first round draft pick. So like. And he's been on enough teams. Like, if he's good with his money, man, he's he's sitting pretty, you know. So yeah, I'm happy yeah. for him. So unfortunately, he's become a journeyman now, and uh, I don't know. He, he's probably going to be on another team next year, even. So. Oh, I know but it's he, crazy. I thought he was going to do all right in Atlanta. Yeah, he was doing all right in Atlanta for a minute. I don't know what went wrong there. <laughs> well, you know, they got a young team in our system with Shanahan. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Because so he's a mover team, and a shaker, man. He likes to get out of the pocket. Oh, yeah, and he makes a great. He ate us up doing that. Remember that game we lost them? That was he's him. He's an off schedule guy. <sighs> yeah. So I don't know, man. But I have faith. You know, I mean, we really we've got a good head coach. Everybody gives Shanahan a bad time. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of understand where it comes from to a certain I, I extent. But it's like you know, when you've when you've been to two Super Bowls and you've lost to the same team twice. Like I don't even think of, about that for a minute, man. Like, you've man, been come to, on. You've been to two Super Bowls on the same team within four or five. Listen, I stand. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to budge on oh. this. People are getting on me about it. But I say, you know, listen, uh. bring me something. You can't just take my suit away and give me a, a, a denim jacket. You know, I mean, I, I need to True. have something better. Yeah. I don't want something worse. <laughs> so until Shanahan. No, no. It's like, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to have something pretty spectacular to replace him with. I mean, what are you going to do? Try something out that you don't, somebody you don't know, hire within. I don't think so. Now we're really, don't see it. Now we're really pissed off, right? <laughs> okay, guys, everybody wanted Shanahan fired, <laughs> and we got a new coach. No, we're, come, we're, we're fighting for I a playoff think, position for the second not, year in a row. No, I don't want that. No, I can't take it. Yeah, no, I don't think that's a good move. But then, you know, you got like them, D'Amico Ryans, man. I'm, what, a, what, a, what a dude. Hey, look where he He's came from. He's got a from. squad, bro. Look where he, look where he came from. That's, and and, and, and dude, man, don't the you, Texans don't, are going to be tough. The Texans are going to be the ones to watch out for. And look what, and look how come they're getting all those killers over there on that roster. Why? They got the same yeah. situation we had. The quarterback doesn't cost any money. Yep. They've got all. Oh, they've got a, nope. a roster from a hell. <laughs> Anybody that's playing them next year is going to get yeah. their brains beat out. And they I'm added so to a team who's already like bad. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, buddy, 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 buddy. Yeah, they're going to be someone to watch out for. Oh. You know we don't have to worry about for the Cowboys. But they're, they'll always be chumps. Well, again, overpaying the quarterback, you know. And he's looking, yep. for, 60, he's looking for $60 million. Although I understand they're okay. not paying him now, so <laughs> that's well, it's hilarious. like you know if he'd if he'd, if he'd won any championships, if he'd won any, if he'd taken to any NFC championship games, he doesn't, even, he doesn't even win. He doesn't even win playoff games, dude. I know. I mean, Brock's won more playoff <laughs> games than even his in his two years uh, than Dak has his entire time in Texas. <sighs> yeah. So. No thanks. Yeah. That's, and a lot of it's his fault. You Dude, can't so I'm gonna, set a I'm going to ride this IMTs. out as being optimistic. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy's captain INT all day long. I feel sorry. For, I seem, feel, kind of feel sorry for the Cowboys to a certain extent. Well, Under old Jerry, uh, Eric Jerry World's rule. Jerry hire some people to run the team. He'd be better off instead of him trying to do it. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's never known what he's not doing. Yeah. He got with a Jimmy, and, and it's, it's, it's uh-huh. been downhill ever since. <laughs> But uh, all right. Cowboys Maddie. are just the NFC Raiders. Cause it's like you know, you look at the Raiders for so many years, and they were under the rule of uh, what's his face, Al Davis. Old, uh, Al. Yeah, so it's, it's the same thing. It's just Cowboys are the NFC version. You'll never learn. So, Chris Hansen's expect. back. Hey, Chris. Hey, uh, you know, um, I, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna be all right. I always tell myself that just to make me feel better, so I can stop worrying. <laughs> Brian, and Matty, I'll, see, I'll see you later in the week, huh? All right, and uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Keep that positive feeling, my brother. I love it. Needs you good to come. Oh in yeah, me. keep the vibe oh. flowing good. Right. We got this. We do. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll catch you in a few. Looking forward to it, Matty. Night, fam. Night, buddy. Oh, night. There he goes, Matty up in Oregon. <clears throat> Yo, hey, hey, Aaron, come on in, Aaron. 
What's up, Brown Poe? Aaron, you know, it's, uh, I've come to the realization, and people are saying otherwise, that Brandon Ayuk is not going to be playing for the 49ers next season. Unless he comes halfway with the 49ers. If he insists on getting his money before camp starts, we got a problem. So, I mean, I, you can work out any scenario in your mind. I it doesn't add up to Brandon Ayuk getting paid anywhere near $30 million. He's going to want that. He thinks he's worth it. I imagine 25 is his bottom line. And uh, if they wait until Jennings gets, uh, Jefferson gets paid, um, Jefferson is going to exceed 30 to $32 million. So now Brandon can say, okay, well, I, I don't know, y'all, because I was going to go 25. I need at least 29 mil, you know. See, and the 49ers don't have the good sense. I don't, you know what I want to know, Aaron? Why the 49ers must, there must be a method to the madness of waiting to the last minute until everybody in the league gets paid. Okay, so let's get this negotiation uh, completed. It's too late, John. You've got nowhere to go. you got to pay him. So, I don't know, what, what are you thinking? Let me stop. What are you thinking? Um, I mean, so what I think is, um, to me, I think Brandon out you worth about, I, I mean, he may not give, like, Thirty million a year, but well, I he may get yeah. about yeah. mm, twenty-four to well, I mean, well, I say about about twenty-three to twenty-five million a year. So, um, and right now the um, you know, the four and has all the all the leverage, so they just they just picked up his. Fifth year option, and um, so I don't think he's going nowhere. And and no, here's the thing: he picked up the fifth year option. Okay, next year, if Aaron should play, I, I figure Brandon will play at some point. He may sit out for a few weeks or something, and then see if the Forty Nine ers struggle. If the Forty Nine ers don't struggle week one to week five or six or whatever, maybe not even sooner than that, Brandon can run it back out there. Right, come on, man, I'm, I'm ready to play. You know, and then now the 49ers will have a whole new look at him now. Because if somebody comes in, let's say Ronnie Bell comes in and just lights it up. Em and JJ just go buck wild. They don't even need Debo, you know, and because the other two guys are just killing it. And now the 49ers are going to look at Brandon and say, well, you know, uh, Brandon, <laughs> now we got you right where we want to. Because next year, Ben Ayuk does a great job. He can go get his money somewhere else. And the 49ers have to compete to sign him. And let's say franchise tag them. You know how the 49ers feel about franchise tag and They don't do it. So, you know, they can't franchise them, tag them next year either. But go ahead. But, um, franchise tag them next year? Yeah. I, yeah. I think that they have to pay him right now because no let's, say that, let's say, for example, if he, well, for example, if he opts to, play on his fifth year option and he has an even better performance this year, I mean, his price tag is going to go up. I know. So, and that's yeah. why, you know, that that's why they got to get it done before, you know, JJ and CD Lamb got, get paid. Oh, God. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Here we We're waiting. We're waiting. To make, to make sure that we have to pay the highest premium out there. <laughs> I, I wish somebody would just explain that to me. I, I just, John, just offer the public, your loving fans, why do you do that? And, I just don't understand. Yeah, Ramo. And, and also, remember this. He, he has, and This is the fifth year Cubs, um, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, but remember this week, the 49ers are a first team run offense, and he has back to back a thousand yards, just 
just imagine what he could do in a passing offense like Buffalo. Um, what the Chargers Cincinnati. used to be like with the Chiefs. Yeah. Because, you know what? That that monster can be – they can release a crack. And if he gets – Brandon Ayuk, he still got uh, that, that, that other rookie they had last year that looks good. Uh, Travis Kelsey's still out there. They tried – to get digs. If they get Brandon Ayuk, I think they'll be just as effective going downfield all day. You can't Brandon Ayuk runs routes as good as anybody. He really does. Oh yeah. He I think to me, honestly, he's a top five top five um, route runner in the NFL. Easily. He loses def- and, um, defenders all the time. Oh yeah, and um, even I mean, like, not saying I want to trade all you, but if they were to trade all you, they would probably get like like a high draft pick, you know. And they have they have an opportunity, you know, maybe drafting offensive tackle, you know, to get your well, Forty Nine is no better than come premier. out of the offensive tackle, but but still, can you is but, there? There's a lot of wide receivers in this draft, Aaron. A lot of them look real promising, too. But, Are the 49ers going to run that game? Yeah. I mean, so right now we right now we have the 31st pick. So May as well be round two. And I know, and yeah, and I know we all want offensive linemen, you know, you know, in the first round. But to me, I'm a best – Playoff available this person because you know, like let's say for example, if there's a corner, um, for example, Kool Aid McKintree, the cornerback from Alabama, mm. if he falls to us, then Forty Nineers won't hesitate to get him. You gotta take, yeah, I mean you gotta take him because he he I'm might to trade be back up into the first the, round. They, they, yeah. You know what? The Forty Nineers are going to try. Ah, uh, thirty-one. Forty Nineers are going to. They're going to. They're not staying at thirty-one. I don't believe it, Aaron. I really don't. But you know what? You don't want a lot of first-round picks because the Forty Nineers cannot afford an expensive first-round pick. They're trying to be frugal right now with the cash. First-round picks are expensive. The higher you get in the round, the more it's going to cost. Yeah, that's true. But and. Or, or maybe they could trade down, you know, a couple of spots. Oh, that has, you don't need a lot of extra picks. Oh. I don't know. Either. I, don't, I'm not, I, I can't even imagine. That's why they get paid the big bucks up in that front office. What are they going to yeah. do? Yeah. And, and also, you mentioned the um, office of tackle from Georgia. Um, Mims. Amarius Mims. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, I mean, he, He's six eight, um, three hundred and forty pounds. Mean, just a <laughs> just a big house. Oh. But the only but the only problem is he only started like eight games. Eight games. He has no experience. So, so he's so he's really raw. So yeah. I don't know if I could take a chance. I know. And, you and, know. And, and what if he fails? Oh, that'd be so sad. Uh, and we gotta go. I'm a, I'll tell you what, let, let's see what happens uh, between now and next weekend. You know, otherwise, I'll see you next weekend. All right, Rob, but give me a Niner shout-out. Oh, yeah. Niner! Oh, my man, Aaron. <laughs> Have a great night, Aaron. Always appreciate you. Looking forward to hearing from you again soon. You too, man. Thanks, man. Take care. You too. There he is! From the blue waters of Hawaii, he is Tony Nagatani. <laughs> Tony! <laughs> uh, Aloha, Rambo. How you feeling today? Feeling good, Tony. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I enjoyed your uh, little quip on Twitter, or should I say X, about being a godfather fan. I, I watched oh. every last movie a minimum of 12 times. Every Rambo, last... have you read the book? Have you read the book? Oh, uh, you know, I read that actually a month before the movie first came out. 
Oh, right. smart, smart, smart man. Yeah. Well, that's how you know who Al Neri is, who they don't really say his name until Godfather 3. So, yeah, I know, uh, right? And pretty, Al Neri, you know, I just, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> and actually, uh, the funny thing is, because actually, you'll always hear him talk about talking, um, uh, what's what's the big guy's name? I got his hand Luca nailed. Brazi. Luca Brazi. Luca. Luca's this guy, but Luca, they took Luca out. He sleeps with the fishes. I said, oh, yeah. man. Anyway, Salazzo give me the second story on that. Salazzo knew exactly what to do, and that was to take Luca Brazi, because that, because if Luca Brazi was out, Salazzo wasn't going to make it. So no. that's the godfather. Yep. All <laughs> right. Anyway, Tony. Well, you know what? You know the situation I'm, I'm, I'm crying about here. What, what are your thoughts? Oh gosh. Well, if you want to talk about Brandon Ayuk, I, I, he's a great player. I think he's uh, the, the best player, the best, the best wide receiver uh, that Kyle Shanahan has developed, and uh, he's proof that Kyle True. Shanahan can develop a wide receiver. Um, and uh, you know, even Ayuk, because he was in the doghouse for a while too, and he he managed to claw his way out, uh, and then he began blocking better, and he runs those routes, and and honestly. The unfortunate thing about Ayuk is that Kyle doesn't use him as often as other teams would have. So I think that a lot of his uh, star, um, his ability to show off that he's a star is sort of limited in this offense. And that's that's fine by me because the fact that, that you know we have so many mouths to feed and that is, that is a good problem for the offense to have. That being said, when I look at it from the 10,000 foot field, yes, he is young. He is he's an excellent wide receiver. He runs the best routes on the team and he blocks. At the same time, I don't think he is as good of a football player as Debo Samuel is. And while, you know, if the right offer were to come, and honestly, for me, that would be multiple picks or something. um, I mean, I don't think the Niners would move him for anything less than the the 15th overall pick. Um, Mm. I think think the likelihood is... um, Ayuk will be a 49er for at least uh, at least two more seasons, I think, because if you mm-hmm. look at, uh, you know, he'll because he'll play on the fifth year option. And then if you look at the franchise tag, uh, twenty one million dollars for a franchise tag, Ayuk for a year is is pretty good. But I, I think yeah, uh, that's it, less it, than it, what it he's sort of, asking for. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it depends on on it will also depend on a lot of things, because this is a big year for the 49ers, because. The team is beginning to get old, you know, mm. uh, and we're, I, I'm not sure how long, much longer Kittle's going to be on the team. Obviously, Trent is, is you know, is is getting a little bit uh, long in the tooth, as they say. And, you know, Debo, Debo is is not the youngest wide receiver uh, as well. So it, it's, I, I'm not, I'm not optimistic about the Niners Super Bowl window in the current configuration going forward. Mm. And I think that, you know, it, again, if the right offer were to come around for Ayuk, the Niners should move him because they don't really use him. Uh, as much as as other teams would anyway, and I think you mm. know Ayuk will get paid as Papa as Papa Dragon uh, pointed out. Ayuk's gonna get, is gonna get paid one way or another, and and I, I and again I love Ayuk, but I'm not emotionally attached to him. And I think um, if ever there was a draft where you could find well, you can find wide receivers every year now, Rombo. These wide receivers coming out now are are, are all. Yeah. I mean, every year it seems like the best players are wide receivers. Well, right? at least the most touted players for the last five like. years for sure. There's always a a premier wide receiver on somebody's team that's just yeah. doing a great would, yeah. job as a rookie you know it, it, and and it's not even the first round guys you guys like puka nakua who are I know. Who you find so late and, and that guy sets rookie records it's it's, it's, it's round incredible. pick yeah oh. exactly He's the wide receiver version of george kittle and and you know what good for puka good for puka but yeah. uh you know um but as far as the 49ers go uh i don't like where we're drafting obviously it's number 31 overall we're kind of taking you know the scraps of the first round of, of what's it, left absolutely you know the the niners though are you know they are set up to take best player available right now in every single round i've said this before and that's the exact thing that they should be doing at, at every single pick this year the niners should just be taking the best football player that is there and not really care that much about positional value. The roster is what it is. And quite frankly, it's going to undergo some changes going into uh, the 2025 season. So uh, now is a time to, to just take the best football players you can and draft for draft for depth. And we don't know what that's going to look like because we pick so late. We don't know if if there's going to be a run on tackles or we don't know if, if maybe the tackles are, you know, if, if the rest of the league doesn't value the tackles as much as, the press mm-hmm. and we think this tackle class is good. We, we simply don't know, and so uh, I, I, we need to stand pat, watch that draft board. If a player they are in love with begins to drop, that's when you begin to think about trading up. You know, uh, like uh, and at the same time, 
The one thing I do not want the 49ers to do is make the same mistake that they made with Trey Lance. Uh, and mm. and just, you know, and, and by the way, I, I, I firmly believe that Trey Lance would have been a good 49er if we had just given him the opportunity to play. But mm. that didn't happen with the 49ers. And I, I at this point, I want a player who's who uh, has a lot of starts, a lot of snaps, and who is durable. So for so for for me, you look at who's available there. You look at who has obviously who's played the best in college, who's started the most, uh, who's played the most snaps, and uh, and that who has the best medicals. And those are the things that, that that I would be looking for because this draft is going to be critical for the next Super Bowl window if there is one. So uh, yeah, oh. that's that's kind of what I think. What do you think, Rombo? No, I agree. And, and you're saying the Adam Peters is gone. I'm, 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 I'm wondering who was the genius sitting in that office that we made some picks that were bonehead picks, but a lot of those picks nobody's seen coming. And I'm just wondering is that magic going to continue? Because the 49ers are doing right. as well as they do is because they draft well, and they've yeah. been doing that for years. So I'm not yeah, sure. This is the year we're going to find out uh, who, you know, like exactly how good Adam Peters was. And it, we're not going to actually find that out for another probably two seasons. Two, three years. Because yeah. that's that's how long it takes for really those, you know, the, those later round draft picks like to mature. I, I suspect that Adam Peters is very, very good. But at the same time, he, I don't think he took. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rombo, but I didn't hear mm. anything about Peters taking any of the Niners scouts with him. And I think that the keeping the scouts is the is that's key. where the that's key. they are the they have their their you know they, they have their nose to the ground looking for those players and so long as there is continuity with the scouts i think we're still going to be able to draft well you know the the problem with the 49ers is they have been able to identify talent right i mean reuben foster was talented right he was just oh, yeah. troubled right yeah. i mean like it or not Mike McGlinchey was a bad pass blocker but kyle shanahan wanted a run blocker mike McGlinchey was a pretty darn good run blocker until he got that career changing injury right mm -hmm. so i look at the people that they pick and and even guys like ambry thomas they, they these are athletic guys oh, right these are you yeah. know and and same thing trey lance you know very inexperienced but you know like the the talent is 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 apparent and so yeah I think there's a track record of the 49ers being able to identify talent. And that's what we see, by the way, in the fifth round with, you know, with, with, with Kittle, you know, with, with Hufunga, guys like that, um, you know, able to identify those like things. The talent eyes are there. And it's just a matter mm -hmm. of do they have the brain? Do they have the, the, the brain and the behavior and, and the, 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 the uh, um, mm -hmm. are they know, made the, for uh, football? Are they made to, to be play, play for pro football. Because, yep. Tony, as you mentioned, Dante Pettis was a damn good football player. Uh, runs routes, does everything well, but he's not really an NFL football player. Something you know? happened with Dante Pettis. Something happened. Like, something soured with Kyle. I don't know. Something. Really bad. Because that, that first year, you know, th there was that the pre-ACL Jimmy G throw to Dante Pettis. Ooh, that was. And that he guy. made that catch. He tracked that ball. Way downfield touchdown versus the Vikings. Who's gonna forget that? Dante yep. Pettis. Yep, yep. yep. Ah. So you know, yeah, the, the yeah. talent is there. The talent is always there. It's always you know, I, I do they have the the, the brain to, to be in the yeah. NFL? One last thing, That's, and I don't have to go. I just okay. want to say this right now because of the new kickoff rules, <laughs> Debo Samuel is going to be so valuable next year. He needs to be returning all of the kickoffs because yeah. of the new kickoff rules. And if he does that, I guarantee you this. If Debo Samuel returns all the kickoffs and stays healthy, healthy all season long, he will be in the running for Offensive Player of the Year next year because Ooh. that man is electric with the ball in his hands. He yeah. he is going to take – if he returns the kicks, I, I over under for uh, touchdown returns on kickoffs for Debo for me is, is five next year. Hey, if I'm right with he you. Stays Especially healthy. the rules are, are, are lined up because Debo would do good in rugby leagues. Uh, the guy is good in open field running. You, 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 oh, my God, he's good at that. Tony, always appreciate you. Can't get enough of you. Tell you what, I'll, I'll be back somewhere during the week if something crazy happens or otherwise next week if you got time. I wish you'd stop by. I'll do my best, Rombo. I'm going to try. All right. Thank you so All much. Right. Mahalo. Yeah, if you see Mario Puzo, if he's in Hawaii, tell him I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Ciao. Ciao, Tony. Uh, hey, hey, Brian. For the Niners, red and gold. I'm rocking with the Niners till I am dead and cold. Yes. Screaming the 49ers name all the way from beat in the Mid-South because the law says know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> 
what it is, Rumbo. Ah, uh, you know, it's that time of year. It's slow. But with the, with the 49ers, there's nothing going on. But the 49ers always have something going on in the front office. If you notice that each and every year, we have to sit back because we're a good team now. We have been a good team for years. There's always that guy we yeah. have to sit around nervously wondering, oh, man, Niners, get this done. Let's go. But I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I'm not feeling so confident about this. A lot of us are, and there's been a lot of good reason here tonight as to whether Brian, uh, Brandon Ayuk will continue to be at the services of the 49ers. Uh, man, I... I'm looking at the money. I'm looking at the, the Brock Purdy contract coming up next year. I'm seeing all kind of things that just don't add up. And also, the draft, as far as offensive linemen go, uh, the 49ers between a rock and a hard place, so they're going to have to think about a wide receiver one. If so, will they look at the first round, which is always not a bad, not a good idea because usually too much expectations are made of first-round picks, and they come in and they bottom out. Oh, God. <laughs> Say, what are you thinking, fam? I'm thinking that if this Brandon ID this Brandon IU deal doesn't get done by any if if it's not done by June, I'm gonna say it like that. We, we I'm looking at danger danger. Get ready. And get your, if get your hard hat. and if the other and if the other receivers like the Jefferson boy, if he gets his deal done before IU, he will. It's gonna be ugly. I know. It is going. It is going to be ugly. And you know that. So, and, Brian, and Brian, you know John Lynch will sit there and they'll wait. They will wait until Jefferson mm-hmm. gets paid. I guarantee it. Oh yeah, purposely, purposely, yeah, yeah. They purposely, you know, like, you know, timing is everything. And then, and then, like you said, um, when it comes time for Brock Purdy. He's going to want his bag oh. next year. So the, the window of opportunities for the Super Bowl, it is narrow. Yeah. So if, Our guys are getting longer. If, if they don't get it, if, if, yeah. Yeah, if they don't, yeah, if they don't get it this year, you know, and in order to pay Brock Purdy, so I'm going to probably eat a summer hour top flight guys with the big contracts. They go either going to do some hell of a restructuring, or they might have to be let go all together. Cap casualty time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which falls back to the draft. Um, we got ten picks in the. Speaking of the draft, we got ten picks. Um, I don't think that ten draft picks are going to make this team. Absolutely. Not. So I'm thinking if they, if, if it's all be possible, see if they can, you know, probably move up, you know, especially in the first round yeah. and, you know, make that, you know, they can make that move. Mm-hmm. Um, use five of them for currency yeah. is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It, at least, yeah, you use at least five, maybe six, you know, and then hopefully you can trade the other, trade the four, trade four of them out of the 10. And, you know, um, I, I see the other, uh, I see the other YouTube, um, who's that? Uh, other YouTube 49er station. They trying to talk up. Now they trying to push Buda Baker, Buda Baker the uh, the safety from uh, the Carlos? Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. Does Buda want out of St. Louis? They throwing I mean, it. St. Louis, <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah they trying to Buda wanted out last year. A bro. trade option. Hmm. Uh, Buddha's wanted out of Arizona for a couple of years, though. Yeah. I think he realizes that the window of opportunity is not going to come in time soon, so he might as well try to latch on to any. You know, him and Stephon Diggs. You know, you know I, I, any I, I contender, be to have players like even that. within the division. Yeah. Because they come mm-hmm. in with that mindset. It's not as much team oriented as look. I'm I'm here to win. If y'all ain't here to win, I'm out of here. You know, it's not about. And yeah. I understand that attitude, but still, don't 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 bring that kind of uh, uh, demeanor into the locker room. It it, it puts people under. Yeah, you're un, I'm un, uneased around this guy. If I make a mistake yeah. out there, he's gonna be looking at me like with daggers in his eyes. You know what? You think yeah. I did that on purpose? <laughs> you know, God. Yeah. Hey, Rumbo, who is the the running back that we all complain about? He's just not getting enough playing time, but when he do when he Jordan do gets it, he makes something happen. 
Jordan Mason. George Mason, please. I'm like, let George Mason, let him play. Just let him play. Give him some, give him some clock, or, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, if we keep going at the pace that Kyle Shanahan is going as far as CMC, he's getting, you know, he's getting all these extra carries or whatever like that. He's, he's not going to last. Long. Way too hard. He can pace it. He can tone those carries down. He does not have to carry the ball that much all game long. So Jordan Mason yeah. should get some run. Also, uh, if you're not going to use Elijah Mitchell, then, then you know, let him go. I, I, I like Elijah Mitchell. He's, a, yeah. he's number two anyway. But, damn, mm-hmm. God, you ain't going to use nobody. Just – Get an get an offensive lineman if you can. <laughs> Everybody wants an offensive lineman. It's, it's, you know we're not going to get be, no. Yeah, it's going to be. We're not going to get an offensive yeah. lineman worth the damn. We have to draft one, and hopefully, and, because the 49ers aren't going to overpay for a good offensive lineman that's already been in the league and established, because he's going to demand a yeah. higher price because everybody will pay him. So you got to outbid every other team to get him. Rombo, do you realize we are probably the first team in NFL history? to have their offense make it to the Super Bowl with partially half an offensive line. <laughs> it, it, it ended up being You know what problem. I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, we got Trent. We got, you know, Trent, you know, Trent's a dog. You know that, Hall of Famer. Uh, Aaron Banks, he's decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the center, he's okay. He's but okay. that right side, you know, yeah, it, there's this. It's just their right side. That's, that's all. Right that's side. all you can say about it. It's always been right it's side. It's just their right side. And the bad thing about it is, uh, Patrick Mahomes had a bad offensive line that year that we lost in 2019. They were okay. They were just okay. They went good. Yeah. You know, they held out one of the yeah. best defensive pass rushers in the game. Why? Because officials. Yeah. Holding. Yeah. What? Where? Right there, ref. What? Right. Okay. I see what you're doing. You know, I, I. I we just can't get a break. And everybody, Fortnite's always crying about that offensive line and, and how they got held and all that and blah, 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 blah. See, they, they they don't have teams that have endured that. See? I got mm-hmm. I got my, my, my defensive lineman getting choked, literally choked down to the ground. You could see the receiver's yeah. arm around his neck and they're going down to the dirt. How is that a legal block? Man. I think I think Leonard uh Floyd. Floyd will be a plus. I think he'll be a plus. He yeah, hopefully he'll be that 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 opposite. Hopefully he'll be that opposite bookend we've been looking for the last two years. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, I think I'm still I'm still having deep I'm still having D four flashbacks. I hope we don't have to go through that no more. Floyd, no, nah, they're not doing any more contracts like that. And also, I wanted to learn Floyd when he came out of college. I thought he was just amazing. He was too small. But that boy is fast, he's vicious, and tenacious. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Fam, dang, we're out of time, though, fam. Let me let me, let me, me see you uh, later on in the week, possibly, or otherwise the weekend. We'll get seriously into the draft start next week. Yeah, I was looking for you Friday, man. What happened? Oh, you, I, boy, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm glad it's over because I don't even want to talk about it. It's really, I was mad as hell. You, oh, you know what, though? It you, ain't happening no more. <laughs> yeah. oh, I keep telling people. I'm like, right, oh, Rumble. Right. Oh. I thought sorry. you was on punishment, Rumble. I thought they well, put you on punishment. That's kinda. Punishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, shout out to you. Shout out to the faithful. Shout out to production. Right, the law is out. <laughs> Thanks, Rumble. Man. Night, Brian. All right. I'll let you, Rumble. I'm looking forward. Okay. And here comes Bill. Bill. What's up, man? Well, Bill, you know, there's been some speculation that. Uh, I don't know about Jerry Rice's. You know, by the way, Bill, I've talked to some people about Jerry Rice's case. I don't watch football, college football that much. Uh, they said he does not resemble uh, Rice Senior in any way. And also, oh, he's, he's a good one. we're not getting him, so I, I've already uh, yeah. passed on that. Hey, I already you know see him signing. They called T.O.'s kid. And I already see him signing Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> and you don't win the Super Bowl next year, possible yeah. trade Brock Purdy. <laughs> <laughs> I, can always, I can always depend on you to come up with something completely out of the, I mean, out of the box. By the way, T.O.'s kid, the 49ers did take a visit with it, had him come over again. Uh, you're going to trade Brock Purdy? Okay, go ahead, talk to me, Bill. What are you going to get for Brock Purdy? I don't 
don't want to trade him, but Shanahan is going to do Shanahan moves. So I've got to put in possible outcomes, like a simulation of what Shanahan might do. Because Shanahan can't win the big one. He's not winning the big one. He's not going to finish his story like uh, – like Cody Rhodes, I don't see him doing it. All right, it's, I don't WWE. see him doing it. He can have all the help in the world, and I don't see him pulling it off because Banana Hand is going to do the Banana Hand moves. So, I, if he trades uh, Brandon Ayuk, who are we going to get to replace him? You make the call. No, I can't, and uh, that's why I said look for the 49ers to look seriously hard at the wide receiver class, and this is a good wide receiver class. But that doesn't mean anything because it doesn't mean necessarily mean they're NFL ready or are going to be as good. So I, uh, it's a real I don't it's a conundrum. I have no idea how to handle this and how they're going to go about it. I can't even even if you think with four fifteen dudes in the room, how, how are they going to do this? I I'm going to have to stir the hornet's nest. And uh, as a possible oh, outcome, I'm going to stir the hornet's nest, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, because, uh, like I said, I see Jay Ross's son going to Philly. I don't see them getting a good wide receiver to replace Brandon Ayuk. Um, so if they do trade Brandon Ayuk, they're going to trade him for the for the cheerleader from the Dallas Cowboys from the <laughs> 1990. That's where you go. So, you know, I'm going to say Banana Hand's going to do the Banana Hand move. So he proves me otherwise at a horse at Lombardi Trophy. I'm going to give him the most criticism out there. I don't hate the Niners. I want them to win. But Shanahan is doing Shanahan moves. And Jed York is happy and content with losing Super Bowl. So what am I to think? Well, Who in all, the world is happy when losing the Super Bowl? Yeah. Why would you be content? You got to win something, you've got to be uncomfortable. you got to want it. When you lose, you can't get up and say, well, it was a successful match. I'm smiling. No, so you're going to want to rematch, and you're going to want to win. Yeah. That's what real champions do. And when you come out there smiling like Jed York does and doing Jed York things, and then Shanahan just – he might as well be be Pete Carroll and ask for some gum. You know, yeah, now remember, Kyle Shannon's not the only guy up there calling the shots. I mean, he's got a committee of guys around him. So I, 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 that's uh, a little too much blame for just Kyle, though, Bill. Well, well, the whole committee, we, we got, uh, we need to figure out what's wrong. We're worried about all these players. We need to look inside who dropped the ball in the Super Bowl. Who dropped it? Uh, All right, if we Ray, lose Ray, Ray, Ray McLeod, actually. But, Do what? Uh, Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, just not just him, but a lot of the Canadians. Oh, yeah, we yeah, start Ray, you know, I need Ray Ray to dive on the ball. Ray Ray's trying to pick the ball up so he can run. I said, Ray Ray, what, what in the world are you thinking? <laughs> oh, my God. Just dive well, on the, the ball. Protect the ball. The most important thing at that moment was to protect man. the ball, Ray Ray. Oh, okay. But, Rombo. No matter how the season goes, I guess we got to be like Jed York, content and happy. Even if we don't have one win in the season, we're supposed to say a great season. So, you know what? I'm going to remain faithful. I'm going to remain smiley. I'm going to be Jed York. Give me some gum. Pete Carroll, I'm going to chew on the side. I'm going to chew on my couch and just smile. Well, Pete's doing that. He's not going to be bothered with all of this next season. So, he'll be up in the – well, he'll be <laughs> probably in the, in, the, in the Seattle front office. That's fine. <sighs> and if you get too stressed out, open your cold one, Rombo, and give a 49er shout out and be smiling. We can't be stressing because yeah. none of us is in our control. And they, they, yeah. You know, they could. That's what's worries. They, they could make a book and make a trade for, uh, you know, a statue. I don't know. I mean, bonehead moves. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying bonehead moves. <laughs> so, you know. I, I, I'm not going to call them who they're going to get, who they're not going to get. Yeah. Just know you're not going to be happy in the draft. You're not going to be happy. Oh. Give me a 49er shot at it. All right. A Niner! Oh. <laughs> Bill, next time you get in here, though, I want you to bring me a – everybody who wants you to want guys, bring me some, some replacements, though, you know? Don't just get rid of him and leave that void. <laughs> 
No, I didn't say you'd rather stay in hand. We got to smile and be happy with him. <laughs> All right, Bill. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh-huh. Bye. Good night, fam. Hey, hey, Steven. <clears throat> going on, Rambo? Yeah, I, I don't know. We, we, we have to endure the draft. You know, it's so funny, Stephen, if uh, some of us are speculating something dramatic happening in the draft. Now, if nothing happens, that means another two or three months. Oh, oh my God. We're not getting any closer to any talks. What are they going to do? A month goes by, another month. Here we are. It's, it's June. Oh, man. Now they're not even talking. <laughs> July comes. Guys, you know what? I don't think Benny I used going to play. I don't think he's kidding. I think he's really going to sit out. August. And the 49ers have come to terms with Brandon Ayuk uh, three days before camp opens. Now he, now he doesn't get any work in all offseason long. And uh, we got a, a so-so Brandon Ayuk. It just, it's always something. But anyway, let me stop crying. Stephen, Brandon Ayuk situation, how would you handle it? How, how do you hopeful it's going to be handled? And about the draft. What, you think I think it's going to take too many points to you, you think so? Yeah, because... Well, is it he wants to get paid, right? But then he's like, oh, yeah, if you want the maximum, hey, uh, he's listening to Debo. He's like, oh, yeah, this is what I did. I mean, it's what happens. Yeah. You know, you have a drama queen in your locker room. You watch them kind of think, become a toxic player and influence other players to act that way. You think they're you know hanging I mean? out off, off season or talking off season long? I, I, maybe. Yeah, they were talking off season. No, I thought, Debo, yeah, Debo, already, Debo already told him, well, you got to wash your walls down, man. Get that 49er crap off your walls, man, on your, on your social media platforms. Let them know you ain't playing. That because that's what D- Debo thinks that worked for him. <laughs> I don't mind players I do that. Debo. That's so millennial. <laughs> that's what that's exactly why I do not like Debo. <laughs> I am so serious, Rambo. Well, because Debo is the type of player like, yeah, when he's good, he's good, but then if he doesn't get the ball, he just starts complaining, complaining, and I mean. Does he? he, he wait, 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 Steve, wait, 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 Does Debo, he doesn't, I've never seen him complain about the ball. He'll come over and, and, oh, he and does. demand, he'll demand, he wants to, he wants the ball because he wants to get it done. But I've never seen him complain, though, that you somebody else is it. getting more you touches than him. Every time they cut away to him. If he doesn't get the ball, he gets frustrated. He gets frustrated, he gets mad, he's like, you know, I'm not getting any targets, da 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 he's just being like, you know, run blocker. At Steven, I've, I've, I've never yeah. heard him do this. I've never heard him do I've, I've heard him, I've heard, I've heard about it going over time, Kyle, 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 give me the ball. But I've never heard him complain about anybody else getting the ball, though. But I, I could have missed it. Watch some of the games. All right. Watch some of the games. I mean, they'll cut away to him, and then you'll see it. You're like, oh, okay, there it is. You know, it's, he's toxic. He's a toxic player. And I know a lot of the 49 fans will argue against me and say he's not. Oh, he's we the greatest thing. Because we'll, Steven, you're, Ryan, you're, the you're thing. building uh, a you case. Know, Steven, you're building a case against Steve. You've been building it for a little while now. I, I don't know if I've ever seen him doing all that. But you have. So, okay. Well, I'll give you some more then. So, I mean, honestly, he's kind of – even VA or during, like, the end of the season, literally at the last point, you know, he was telling uh, DA to like, hey, look, if you want to secure more money, you got to do this and this. I mean, that's the wrong person to really ask because it's like, you know, they let him sit out for a cool while. And then they finally signed it before the season started. So if you're asking me, I mean, the last person I would ask on how to get more money would probably be Debo. <laughs> I would probably look at, you know, Red Warner, Red Warner because yeah. he got a stupid contract. Um, and he didn't say who else? Trent Williams also got a crazy contract, you know. But then you gotta you gotta remember, 49ers also have leverage. They have leverage in terms of emotional connection because DA has always been a 49er fan, so they pro- they're gonna use that against them. You know, it's a doggy, it's a business at the end of the day. You may love it, they may love you, but at the end of the day, it's still business. Uh, in all reality, though, if you look at it, if we lose Brandon Ayuk, are we gonna be hurting? Kind of, yeah. Will we see a resurgence of Debo and uh, Debo Samuel? Probably, uh, but I mean, will we see? You know, a flash of Ronnie Bell, maybe. I mean, there's a huge, there's a huge opening for him right there. The ball. He gets open though. But you know what? You know what the problem is with Brandon Ayuk too, Rumbo. He also, he also, he's he's not as flashy as he he doesn't stand out. When he runs on the field, he doesn't stand out, and I think that's the main problem. 
is that if you look at you know OBJ or you look at um, he's not he's not he's just not WR one. Um, those guys that you mentioned yeah. are so. Yeah, and that's the problem. That's the problem. It's like we have these wide receivers, and not one can you say confidently is a wide receiver one. Who can you say confidently? Without a shadow of a doubt, is our is our WR. Well, you know what? Year before last, I think Debo was actually. He but, was, but, but we the thing but, is that he doesn't run the field. He just takes the backfield and the takes. Yeah, we don't incorporate. Kyle doesn't run that kind of offense, though. He doesn't even want you to know who, who, what WR one is. Exactly, and that's the problem. That's the problem. We don't utilize our talents to the best of their ability. You know, it, it can be the same thing, like what happened with uh, uh, Green Bay. You know, Green Bay, that player. Who do we pick up from Green Bay? I forget what his name is. The uh, linebacker. Yeah. The Devondre. Devondre. What's it? Uh, Devondre what's Campbell. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. The problem is, Rambo, is that we have so much talent and we don't utilize them to their fullest potential. We just say, hey, you know what? You'll get the ball when you get the ball. Until then, you keep blocking and let McCaffrey carry the ball. Well, you it's know, become that kind of team. And that Steve, sucks because it's Steve, like, you know. It's, it's been effective, though. I mean, I mean if you're going okay, to change it, how are you, you going to do? If I'm going to change if I'm, honestly, if I'm going to change it, uh, you're going to probably want to do a – I probably utilize D-Boys and jet sweeps. I probably would target Brandon Ayuk a little bit more, some slants or some deep routes. Jawan Jennings, definitely. George Kittle needs to be incorporated. Granted, he's been having a catching issue this past season. I mean, there have, some, there have been some clutch moments where he could have caught it, and it just plops right out of his hand. And he gets, he knows it. He gets frustrated. No, um, you know who else I would probably incorporate? Ross Dwelly. If I know that you know they're playing man coverage yeah, on Ross is you know, George Kittle, or if learn. I know... Debo's not in the game, and I know that Brandon Ayuk just seems to get you know zoned out a little too well. I'm going to incorporate Rossoli because Rossoli has not dropped a single pass his entire career with the 49ers. He Steve, hasn't been targeted as much, but Steve, when he does, Steve, he, talking about, he does not drop. You talking about last season? Right? Ross is gone. No. Yes. I went. Yeah. I thought he stayed. I thought it was Charlie Warner that left. He left too. <laughs> we got the two oh, rookies. Shit. We got the two and the well, other at least guy. We know. Oh. So you know, we know we're that's why we went after Brock Wright in the Lions said, well, you made a mistake because we're going to pay him. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you, know, just, you know, Brock <laughs> Wright, we had him in the, in the Lions. They put, he's, he was, uh, all they had to do was match the offer the 49ers said, right? So Yeah, know. but then I think what they're doing is they're slow cooking and saving it for Brandon Ayuk. If I, you know, you already know my No, no, they Eagle. just didn't, you already know. They don't have any confidence in uh, but, the, the white tight ends we have. And they were trying to see if they could pick yeah. up one. Well, we're back at square one, so it's just George Kittle. Yeah, well, that tight end of that two, who's they they admitted that two was going to be somewhat of a project. They now say I read that the other day. I said what? Oh no! Yeah, that was stupid. That was a dumb move, in my opinion. That was a dumb move. Oh, he's a project. Okay, so there's that what we're just going to look forward to every time we draft somebody is that there's just going to be a project. Oh, this person's going to be a project. Oh, this person's going to be a project. I mean, they said the same thing about Trey Lance. He's a project, you know. Oh, yeah. Made all the way up to round one, yeah. you know, pick three, and all of a sudden you don't, you don't he's a project. project. No, they can't. You don't get trade up for a project. That was foolish. I mean, that was probably the most disrespectful thing to probably ever happen to Trey Lance. Was hey, look, I'm going in the first round, and then you guys trade me two years later yeah. for my backup. Yeah. See, we get, we for my backup's some... back up. My bad. <laughs> and then, get, then let him go. Run him out there until he gets killed and we'll get rid of him. Anyway, Stephen, yeah. always great to talk to you. Hey, did the little girl arrive yet? Yeah, she did. All right, yeah, I thought I had some crying back there. All right, what is your name? Oh, no, that's Roman. That's Roman. He just woke that's up Roman. from a nap. He's, uh, he's hungry. He's not happy. All right. Well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rambo. All right, you go ahead and get back to fam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see you later on in the week. If not, I'll see you this weekend. So, hey, hey, Rome. Hi, Rambo. <laughs> All right, Rambo. Hey, Rambo. Hey, Rambo. He'll say right. he'll be. He say he got another few weeks. He'll be able to say that. All right. Night, fam. <laughs> uh, and Fortnite Brian says, Stephen, how's that? Yeah, we just asked about that. How's the baby? Yeah, sounds like uh, she's sleeping. I guess Rome's up though. Well, uh, it's a big show. 
show Doc Doom. Come on in. <laughs> A.K.A. the advocate of the devil. Um, <laughs> the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Rumble, so what are you thinking, man? Because uh, you know, I'm, I'm almost... I'm, I'm I'm sitting in the back seat of that car you're driving, uh, talking about Brandon and IU. Um, I, I I don't want to see him go, but I could I don't I don't understand how they're going to keep him. Also, the draft, for sure. I know you can appreciate the fact if the 49ers do go first round wide receiver, I can see you now having just a fit, just jumping up and down and screaming and running across the street, yelling to people. I got a wide receiver one, and this guy's serious. Brandon, you can go to hell. I can get a, I can get an offensive lineman in the next round. Am I right? Uh, no. Regardless <laughs> of what happens, um, whether we get an offensive lineman or a wide receiver in the first round, that's 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 the best interest of our team, and that's exactly what you have to look out for in regards to Brandon Ayuk. Um, what do Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, AJ Brown, Tyreek Hill, uh, Brown, Tyree, have in sure. common? First round picks. They've all been traded. Oh, and then there's that. You know, that's you know because show there's Devontae a lot. Devontae Adams has been traded. I know, right? There's a lot of good. All of them. Have, name a wide receiver one that's with the team we started with within the last six years. Diggs is running all over the league. Devontae's trying to get Stephon out. Stephon Diggs was traded exactly. Oakland. Uh, damn, that's a that's an interesting point. Where, where are you going with that? It's not going to kill us to trade him. That's my oh. point. If it, it'll kill us more if we keep him, and that's going to be sixty sixty million dollars tied up into the wide receiver room. Can we really afford that? No, Antonio. I mean, I like. They're all divas. Antonio Brown exactly has been traded. Yeah, they're all and. Divas. Ayuk's asking for twenty eight million north and the forty ers are 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 at a number and they obviously can't come to an agreement to a number and what is the next thing you do? You trade him. Draft night? That is exactly what we that's exactly what we did with Buckner. We traded him because we couldn't have come to an agreement with a number. And they 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 stiffed Eric Armstead and Ooh. offered him six million and he said no. D-Hop. And they ended up letting him go. Wow. I didn't... God, it, the more yeah. I think about it, my God, it's true, show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I'm thinking: Are the Forty ers going to trade him draft night? Possibly, or a week before the draft, or maybe two weeks before the draft. Who knows? What, um, what kind of compensation will make you satisfied? Uh, either a first round pick or multiple, multiple mid round, multiple day two picks, because we can use those to trade up to the first round again. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and we get a first out of Brian and Ayuk. When you think about it, when it's all said and done. Gonna, so, so you know what? If I and yes, there are wide receivers that can. Bet, I would bet that's going to happen. And yes, there are wide receivers that can replace Brian and Ayuk. That there's Xavier Worthy. There's Xavier Le- Leggett. Don't get who Jackson, I mentioned either. earlier. There's um, Malachi Corley, who's a Debo clone. Um, Did you say Debo? And there's multiple other. Debo clone. Oh, um, yeah, that's been pull pull hamstrings. No, <laughs> um, and uh, there's there's Jacob Cowling out of Arizona. There's uh, who's the next slot, slot route runner, um, and on and on and on. Like if we franchise tag him next year, that's going to hit hurt us even more financially next year. That's a twenty one million dollar hit, twenty one to twenty five million dollar hit. Well, yeah, you, you can't spread that around. That's true. You can't spread that that And then out. we don't get as much back we don't get as much back in compensation as far as draft goes next year because what if he sits out half a year because uh, he's not happy? Then he becomes a diva and people are gonna be turned off by that and we're stuck with a twenty one million dollar franchise tag and we're screwed. Uh, well you know. Maybe we we, we maybe we can do a straight up deal with T. Higgins and get him to take a decent amount of money. <laughs> you know that's who he's waiting for to get paid. Um, they're going to pay Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase. They're going to pay. Yeah. He's actually wait, He's actually waiting for Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson to get paid. Stacey, like where they're get, like where they're getting paid. But with all due respect, you, well, you're not in their zip code. 
you know, he's going to want to run, like, but he's going to want a, those are top five wide receivers right there. Both of right. those, absolutely. Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, but they're utilizing. You're a offense. top ten receiver, yeah. Top fifteen receiver at best, the bottom. I can. There's ten receivers that are better than Debo right now. Are better than Ayuk. I'm sorry, that have been in the league right a lot longer than he has. That are worth thirty million dollars, and I, you know, I mean. I Okay, yes, he's a great route runner, but he's also been a targeted 105 times. True. Last season. Listen, how, many, how much is CD Lamb going to get? I don't know. See, that's where it's. That, I don't think I don't know better than, either. than the matchup with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. He's going to think though that whatever CD Lamb's getting paid, I I got I got to get better. Yeah, um, he definitely needs to get better um, to reach those. I'm talking about level. more money. He's going to want more yeah. than CD's getting. Oh, oh, yeah, for sure. But I don't think the 49ers will be giving it to him. Um, and the, that's, that's why the best interest of the team right now is just to trade him now when you can. If you get the Bills' 28th pick, so be it. I mean, <laughs> that, that's two first round yeah, picks. Right that's the center and offense. Yeah. yeah, that's the Bills. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's where Josh, Jackson Powers Johnson is supposed to be landing, the, the center from Oregon. Oh, we can get man. the J- Jackson Powers Johnson and then J.C. Latham at 31. You know what? Brandon would love it. And bam, our, our center and offensive tackle have been solved. Yeah. Granted, he's going to be sitting behind Colton McKivitz for a year because we were extended him for a year, but also at the same time, he's going to be competing for the starting job this year. Um, so it could go either way. Whoever wins the battle out, I mean, we can get off of Colton McKivitz and get rid of that $7 million contract. So if he beats out Colt McKivitz, but more than likely that he will sit behind Colt McKivitz and get his body right in shape for the NFL and play the following year, mm. which is a win-win. Yeah. This is going to go on and on. I guarantee this is going to – draft night, I can't wait for draft night because we're all going to be sitting on pins and needles wondering, all right, Niners, what are you guys going to do here? Well, I'm not, as a matter of, I'm not even looking at the draft picks. I'm wondering, what are you going to do with Brandon? Are you going to pick up some more picks? What are you gonna do? Because you guys can't. And one more them. last point. One last point before I go. Um, with all due respect to Jack, we've already addressed the defense in the free agency this year. We went all out on defense this year. We don't need to do that in the draft <laughs> this year. They're That's happy true. with the corner that they they picked up from the Saints. The biggest we've got we a lot picked of up a whole ton of defensive linemen in the in the free agency they this don't year. Have a reputation for getting. Um, yeah. yeah, and not only that, we don't. There's. There's no need for a defensive line anymore right now. No. We're set. So, so there's nobody in the draft that's going to be for a starting spot. It. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. I don't know when they're going to pick one. They're going to pick a defensive lineman, though. And we're all going to say. Malik Collins. Uh, Malik Collins and Leonard Floyd are going to be our starters for the yeah. edge and the defensive tackle. So you, it's already said and done there. You, you got to build depth, though. Anyway, so I'm, I'm not going to. Oh yeah, we have plenty of depth. So because I agree with you, but I, I don't. I really want them to focus on point, other positions of need, but that's always a problem yep. too. You just can't win. All right, Joe. Always a pleasure. You didn't bring, right. a, lot of, you didn't bring a lot yeah, of doom we, today. You were we, like, okay. No, I bring solid points because we already have a lot of contracts and that are expensive, and a lot of star players on our team. How are we going to afford another one? I and know, with right? all due respect, Buda Baker is not going to be coming here. That's another expensive player. That's going to piss off Brandon Ike anymore. All you guys can afford to play Buda Baker, can't but you can't it. afford to pay me. I'm out. <laughs> all right, Joe. So, I will see you Take care. Week. Shout out to everyone. Thanks, all right. Man. Take care. Nice. That's a good point. If you're bringing over no, no Buda Baker, because the first thing Brandon Ayuk going to say is exactly that. Ellis! Ron Bizzle. Hey, Ellis. Here we sit, Ellis. Off season. April. Everybody else is... We're going to be the last team. We're going to watch every other team iron out their issues. They'll be done. Either before the draft or a little bit after. We'll be still waiting for Kyle and Shan- John to make a move to or something besides ignoring us and says, uh, John Lynch and, uh, and Kyle Shannon are getting ready for OTAs, but there's no word out of Santa Clara as to how they're going to uh, treat the Brandon IU case. <laughs> Did everybody say, okay, well, that doesn't mean anything because they never say anything. Okay, but they never do. So we need to stop worrying. Yeah. Else, I'm thinking out loud. Well, I said, what do you think about this situation? What's going to happen on draft night? Are you going for wide receiver one, offensive lineman? You're going to make a deal with Ayuk? What's, what's, what are you thinking? 
Uh, man, definitely uh, offensive linemen. If, if there is still a, a top, you know, if there's still a top offensive lineman available at 31, I feel like we might go up a few. The only problem with trading with with, with trading up is it's, it seems like we give up a lot of shit. Like if we can't give we it, right? another team, like you know, depending on how many spots we go up, like if we go up like five or six, that's probably going to require three picks. You know, at, at, at minimum, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and I, I, I don't. Yeah, no, we we don't, but we definitely need some starters. If we we need to acquire at least three to five players that can have an immediate impact on the team or play. If three of them are like starters and like stand out, great, you know, really solid players, good. And if the other, you know, two could be rotational pieces that can build up to becoming starters. Like we need that. We need to try to capitalize on this draft as much as possible. Um, yeah, no, 10, 10 players aren't going to make this team that we draft. However, we still need to make sure that we can get at least three to five players that will make this team for sure. And that will at least three of them can start being, you know, offensive lineman, um, a defensive lineman. And then, um, you know, I mean, I don't know who else you want to put out there, or maybe a, a corner or, uh, you, you know, somebody, a, a secondary yeah, yeah. player. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be a wide receiver. It's not going to be a running back that makes a team and, and has an immediate impact. It's not going to be any of that. Unless we were to draft, um, you know, my boy Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. That's mm. the only player that will come in offensively that you know we we still may be in the we still may have opportunity to get if he's available in the first round but he'll be gone in the second um no later you know and uh but i don't expect him to make it out that far but he he just might though so if we get xavier uh, you know that would be nice you know get a offensive lineman in the first round get xavier in the, in the second we have a second round pick i know mm. i don't know how far back though are we 62 so we would possibly have to draft – we possibly would have to trade up and get, you know, closer into the early second round if he's still available and get – that's one wide receiver that I, I could – I wouldn't care if we got no wide receivers in his draft. If we could move up and get that one wide receiver, I would feel it, it, that would be a tremendous feel. Because when he comes into the league, he's he's going to ball out, dude. Like the way the, – his stature, his speed, his strength, uh, his athleticism, his, um, you know, the catch point, you know, everything. He just looks like one of those guys Always that wins. are going to make an immediate impact yes. in, you know, on the team. Um, but, again, because we already have so many weapons and stuff like that, I just don't feel like that that's going to be a move, um, you know, especially if we keep Brandon Ayuk. If we keep Ayuk, you know, we, we could still um, – we could still rotate and, you know, keep him there. We'll have Jawan. We are going to get a wide receiver, but it's likely not going to be early. It'll be somebody later on um, in the, like the fourth or later round or third or later round. Um, but, man, if we could get him, that would be wonderful. But I, I don't think it's going to happen. But offensive linemen got to be first, man. And, um, you, would think, you know, in the second man. round, yeah. I, I think – yeah, three offensive linemen minimum. I have no. We get out of this draft and and trade the other you two. Know? Do whatever you want to do, but you bring me three offensive linemen. One of them has to be good. I mean, an immediate starter, like a guy that's going to come in right now and play. You know, a center, a guard, and a tackle, or two tackles and a guard, or you know, two guards and a tackle, and uh, you know, or guy that uh, you know, a guy that can play multiple positions on the offensive line. You know, uh, we we can always use a couple of those guys, mm -hmm. but don't get anybody that you don't draft someone that you're going to plan to play out of position. Mm -hmm. Don't do that shit this year, and, please. And, and make sure another period. I want them to be Polynesian. I'm just have to be racist about that. <laughs> well, there's there's no there's know, nothing racist about it. They just they 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 they, they have really uh, they have really great football players and athletes, especially they, in the they, game of football. They, they have, um, you know. Mostly, so I mean that's just what it is. We all, a lot of us, have played with them, and um, you know they, they, you know they're uh, all, all, all those, 
Yeah, just 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 naturally good players in the offensive line. I mean, Pene Sewell, um, a lot of these guys have family members that are playing in the league mm. and stuff like, you know, brothers and cousins, and, you know, they're all looking really good. But uh, the kid from BYU, he's going to be gone, I think, probably like the – you know, he'll he'll be gone before 15. Was um, that, there's was another one out of Washington. Washington, yeah. Um, what's, his, what's his name? Shit, I, I don't know their yeah, names. I just but I know you're talking about the one, but, the one at BYU, and um, I don't know if you're at Washington. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and Notre Dame's a, got a one, at least I heard about. Notre Dame's always got what they say he'll go in the top five. Yeah, you know, and and it's crazy because you know there's still wide receivers, there's still uh, quarterbacks, and you know defensive alignment and stuff like. So they're they. I wouldn't be surprised if we were able to get some steals in that late first in in that in that second round if we, you know, if if we can do if we can make the right moves, man. Like I, I told you before, and I heard somebody else say earlier, this is going to be the draft where we get to see who really had the goods when it came to the scouting department and drafting players, mm-hmm. and then. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we start to build now for the, what's going to happen or what the team's going to look like in the next four years. We're not going to get a, a George Kittle replacement out of this draft. Um, we're not going to, you know, we're not, we're not going to get a, uh, I, I mean, D, uh, Debo could still be on this team after this season, but I really feel like this might be after, the, you know, this is Debo's last year, I think, on his contract. He's going to be looking for another payday. And we're not going to be paying him, you know, buku dollars or nothing like that. So, um, and, and, and you know. Not, um, not what he's going to be talking about because Debo's going to come in and talk. He, he already told everybody he wants to play for a second contract. But we do have to go, fam. I'm, Xavier, I'm Xavier Leggett, even mm-hmm. more why getting Xavier Leggett in the draft would be ex- an extraordinary pick to potentially replace and fill in that Debo void. That boy is like 6'3". He's big, fat. I think he ran like a 4'3". I mean, Damn. you go look at him. Go look Go look, Go look. look at his highlights. Xavier Leggett from South Carolina, uh, Rombo, when you get some time. I know you, you still got your you still got your ID on, your IG on uh, silent mode or, or <laughs> no, on, on whatever I'll, mode, you know what? man. Just, I need you looking at some of that Because shit, you man. mentioned that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that off today. I've been meaning to take it Do off it forever. Right now. <laughs> all right, all right, out of reach. all right it's all great no it's all great Appreciate all right you, man all y'all right. know what it is man uh, shout out shout out to you both thank you for the platform as always shout out production oh, thank you and, uh, shout out all the family man y'all know what it is and uh you know it's a long it's a long list of yes yeah, uh, the fam man y'all know what it is. hopefully everybody's doing well y'all stay and, strong hit that like subscribe you know where you you're at yours, fam. all right yes sir all right Ellis. peace Thanks, fam. And Cubs, that's you, Justin. Get it in, Cubs. <laughs> uh, Holy shit. Justin. Am I talking to you? Justin, yeah, Justin, I've been I've been watching your uh, comments in here and uh, they're very interesting. Justin, you know, this is a situation that's going to be treated with, 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 with gent- uh, gentleness somehow. And the point is, we have to be satisfied. This is my bottom line. Every year I've been satisfied since these dramas unfolded each and every no. off season. No. Are we going to be happy this year? No. <laughs> no. I, I, I agree because I don't I, see it. But go ahead. I, 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 I can remember going back to 1994. Mm-hmm. That was the last time I was happy. <laughs> no. I know, right? That's I, uh, Honestly, I, that's true. God. I, I'd like to talk about something else. Because, oh my God, what I just had to listen to really burned my ears. How come? However, however it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant, <laughs> man. That guy felt a certain way. It's okay. It's fine. But, Alex. We need to respect Alex and what he had to go through. And everything that Alex did. Smith. Yeah, 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 okay. No, I was um, wondering which Alex. I was when he, Alex Smith, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. When he was drafted, all I wanted the whole entire time, I'm sitting there going, 
no, 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 fuck. That just happened. Right? Mm-hmm. So Alex Smith got drafted, but that man, he went through hell in a handbasket. Yeah. He deserves every respect that we have. Now, on, on our current team, mm, I don't think that uh, Brock, I really don't, and this is very sad to say, I don't think that Brock deserves what Alex earned. It's two different things. Alex deserves that. Brock hasn't earned it. Justin, you, he hasn't got, you're talking about his, his, his compensation. That's next year, though. It's not about compensation. It's not about compensation. It's about the respect that we give oh, yeah. to the oh. player that is. You know, you know. So the player that is. Justin, you make a good point as far as, you know what? What if, what if Alex would have came in with Shanahan instead of the clown show he went through? Yeah, remember, Alex had a new offense every year until Harbaugh came, right? So, you know, <laughs> I, you're right. Alex, poor guy. Because Alex was a much better quarterback than what we we got to see early on. When Carbaugh showed up is when we seen the Alex Smith that we should have seen in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, When Alex Alex got drafted, he had seven coordinators in seven years. I know. And three head coaches in like six years. Like He seriously got the bad scope of the world. And turned out to be the greatest man that there is. As a man, I'm a man, you're a man. Hmm. That guy going through the substance, okay, in Washington, and his horrific injury. Oh, that was frightening. It was terrible. And at what point did we all become... In love with Alex Smith. After he left. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I didn't want to see him get paid anyway. But you're yeah. right. No, you're right. You yeah, no, you're absolutely after you right. Left. After he left. But when he propped up Cap, okay, when he propped up Colin Kaepernick, when he propped up himself, when he took, <clears throat> man, you know what? As, as a Niner fan, and I am the biggest Niner fan, and I think we all are. If you're going to listen to this uh, stream, this podcast right now, we're all the biggest Niners fan. Well, now there's some like, that's fans all in there. Cool. Yeah. yeah, man, fuck off, Jim Everett. <laughs> and, and F off, <laughs> and F off uh, Romilia. Uh, okay, stand, stand two tall. Uh, two, just 10 toes deep, let's go. But moving forward, anyway, my last point before I leave you is Alex Smith, maybe he didn't get the love that he deserved. Maybe he didn't earn the love that we want to give him. But that was a phenomenal player for our team. It sucks what happened to Eric Armstead. It really does. Now, honestly, you didn't make your 10 years, fine. But what happened to Alex, that's unfortunate. Tell me I'm wrong. No, no, there's there's so many stories that uh, you feel bad about players. You know, Justin, the, the NFL being a business as it is, I never can accept that. When I see a player being abused or treated poorly because it was because of business, I always question the ethics behind that kind of thinking. You owe these people something no matter what. But the NFL says we don't pay them a damn no, thing. We paid them, we paid them what we paid them, and they should be happy that they made it as far as they did. And that's the way they look at it, you know? So we can get mad. Yeah, but, that's not real. but that's not real. But that's not real. Okay, so the way that you want to spin it, right? Okay, so you're paying a million, 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 million. Okay, great. But in every uh, um, place that you live in the world, okay, so you live in Texas, you live in fucking Florida, 
but that doesn't make it fucking real. Okay, so the tax change. So Eric Armstead, with his uh, 28 million guaranteed, no tax. It plays a lot right. It plays a lot better in Florida where there's no tax, as you said. You're correct. Right. All right. So let's move forward. All right. So there's uh, uh, Debo. Debo's do something around twenty four million uh, coming next year, and coming next year, we're not obligated to anybody else. That is of significance. As of this now, time. there is Justin, just we we're gonna, as we're gonna, as we're gonna as run of, out of time. I uh, tell you what though, Justin, let me. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you somewhere during the week if something crazy happens. Otherwise, I'll see you next weekend. All right. <laughs> It'll get better. You're going to lose Zemo. And we, and by the way, we You're love Alex Demo. Smith. <laughs> All right. I love Alex Smith. Don't get me started. We're going to lose Zemo. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right, it's going to happen. They haven't, even, they haven't even talked to him. <laughs> Just say goodbye. Send him a note. All right, Justin. Tell me have I'm a great night, fam. Have they talked to Zemo? Where have you heard that? <laughs> Where have you heard about them talking to Zemo? Demo. Gamador Lenore yeah, no, he, is he, a free agent next year. <laughs> Just we, they we, haven't talked to him. Well, we really got to go, though. But they will. Demos, he's a good guy. Yep. All right, fam. Have All a great right, night. Good guy. All right. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye Justin. <laughs> uh, Justin's feeling good tonight, Hey, 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 Casey. Well, third time's the charm, Rambo. What's shaking? <laughs> Casey, Texas hold him. Hey, you know, Casey, I've always, I was sitting there listening listen to Beyonce say, when did that term get started? And you're the guy to ask, what does that mean, Texas Hold'em? Is that a thing that started in Texas? Uh, I believe it, the game started uh, on riverboats in the south. Ah. Um, I'll bet I'm not sure, Rombo. That there's sense. That sounds there, right. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of actual, you know, deep esoteric uh, kind of meanings behind cards and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um. That's the only yeah, man. There's, really there's, there's a lot. Everybody knows. Texas Hold'em. Is that when a guy sits there and he and he bluffs as long as he can, and everybody's showing, showing, showing? Nah, I'm, I'm Texas. I ain't showing you shit. <laughs> you know. So I, what is? Where does that come from? But anyway, in case that's what you're, that's your cue, and Rumble, I'm not here to talk about Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Well, Rombo, I don't wait two hours on the phone on a Sunday night to speak to a grown man about cards on the phone. <laughs> you know, uh, Case, you know, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I can't. I think something big is going to happen on draft night now, because the fact is, the money's just. I don't get where this money's. The Forty Nineers are talking like they're talking. I think they're putting up that screen to draw a trade. The Forty Nineers can't pay Brandon Ayuk. If Brock Purdy wasn't on the roster for next year, or if he had two more years left on his contract, maybe. But as far as the 49ers are talking trash, I think they're bluffing. I think he gets traded on draft night, or because they're not going to let him walk, or he ends up somewhere I mean, else. Uh, from the videos that I've watched, uh, you know, the Niners don't have to pay Purdy, or actually can't uh, renegotiate with Purdy until the end of next year. Why not? And end then, of next year. Is that right? Because I know they want to get mm-hmm. it done before the end of next year. Until January. They, they can't even do it because of the collective, collective bargaining agreement. You know, but here's the thing. If you if you do a deal right now with a uh, Brandon Ayuk, that doesn't become effective until next year either, though. And they have their bought his fifth-year option, so I would imagine that he's going to play for the 49ers next year. Okay, I could be wrong on that uh-huh. for sure. That's the way that's going to work. They're going to let that money stumble down, stumble down. The cap expands. They're going to get rid of some other players. I don't think Kyle's you know going to want I, to I, trade I, Brandon. Kyle's such a you know, wide receiver-focused coach. Yeah. You know, Brandon, and he, he was so happy when Brandon Ayuk got drafted. You're right. I don't think Brandon's leaving. But I do Brock think the 49ers needs- are in kind of an identity crisis by trying to do too much at once. I know, right? This is the first time we had uh, doubling up on big contracts. 
If you're worried about Ayuk, you got you got BA now. Debo's contract takes a huge leap next year. Well, you know, Robbo, if you think about the 49ers over the last 10 or 15 years, you think of them as being a run heavy team, right? Mm-hmm. But in their in their in their uh, Super Bowl wins, you know, they were pass heavy offenses. And it, well, they had premier, they had they had top flight wide receivers, one of the greatest of all time, right? So you're right. Mm-hmm. We had a great run game every time too, though. And, you know, two of the best quarterbacks of all time. And then there's that. <laughs> so, I think Josh Jobs is going to be a great addition. I mean, you know, the whole offense is is going to boil down to how well Purdy does in his or second full do. year yeah. and his ability to command the offense and make those split-second decisions. Yeah, and I think he's um, good at that. I really do. Mm-hmm. And and he was just there's a rookie. There's in it. You know, he led the league last year. First full year, he led the NFL. That's, yeah, that's that's why I think no matter what he One of the craziest sports kid, stories of all time, Robbo. Yeah, I think he gets better from here. And then that's when he enters another level, upper echelon. Good. Because his mind is like a It really just can't be understated, you know. He was the last pick of the draft. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I know, that's the right word, too. That's a phenom. Yeah, and I, speaking I of phenom, Rombo, uh, did you watch WrestleMania tonight? Undertaker saved the day. I thought they didn't watch the, okay, the Undertaker. I didn't know he was going to show up or not. No, I didn't watch it. I'm going to watch it later. Man, it was crazy. Yeah, Undertaker showed up out of nowhere. Defeated The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he would have told me. You know that? Both those guys, Vince McMahon has them whenever he wants them to come in and save the day. And Rock is already called a franchise, movie franchise saver. Uh, now he comes in and saves Vince. Because the WWE is becoming something that people anticipate too easily now, right? So you bring Rock back being The Undertaker. Man, that's that's brilliant. This man's genius. You can't kill the dead man, Robbo. No, you know. <laughs> Spirit of Undertaker lives on. Uh, <laughs> hey, Robbo, what's up with all these pessimists tonight, man? We got a big show call in saying they got to trade out you. you know, he, just, he drops a bomb. And he, I shout out to everybody in the chat. Have a good night. You know, we got Bill calling in, you know, this pessimistic energy as usual. You know, what? No, they, they're, they well, what happened true. to us, Rombo? They're, no, no, they're not us. It's, they, they, they remain true to their colors. You're right. It's this not is what us. Big show, agree, you know, it's well what said. Big Show does. And Bill just comes up with angles <laughs> to freak people out. I don't even think Bill believes some of the things he says. You know, to, I think we're going to get Jerry, all, the, all the legacy babies and bring them on the 49ers. That's not going to happen. That was never going to happen. <laughs> and Bill I was think serious they're about fine, that. Rombo. I think they're going to coast through the season. Behind Chris Christian McCaffrey again, you know he's like twenty seven years old. Man, they got a few years left in Christian. I know, but don't let's uh, pace him, pace him. Let some of those other running backs take a little load off him. I just that's all I want to see is Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell take a little bit of his workload. Just you know, I think it all, but just take a percentage of it every week and every week consistently. Keep McCaffrey's carries down to about tw- between twenty and twenty one. That's it. All I want to see. Don't get him up to 25 and 30 carries, Kyle. You're running a risk. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's going to be tough to tell Kyle that. but I know. He, boy, he is. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. What is he thinking? If you ask him, he explain it to you. He treats him like Kyle's Jerome office. Bettis, Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> he never did that to any of his running backs in Atlanta. He ran by committee. He ran us by committee up until now. He yeah, speaking of Atlanta, Rob, but I like what uh, the Falcons are doing right now. Oh, they're, they're putting like, together uh, all, They're putting a unit together, aren't they? I, I like their head coach for Hugh Morris. I think I, I saw this clip of him uh, talking the other day. I was ready to run through a wall this week. Dude is he's, he's he's got the right. He's gonna be he'll run that team. So, and and the Rams think yeah. Raheem Morris comes from Fort, Ra, Raheem came from from like Tony explained. Raheem used to be with Atlanta a long time ago. <laughs> Shut up, Rams. Damn, that that Rams fans, boy. They, oh, man. They get wound up lying, and they just get crazy with it. Uh, but anyway. Well, Case. Well, Rambo, here else? we are in April talking about the Super Bowl. I think it's going to be oh, we shouldn't do that. 49ers and the Texans. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? 
don't. That's, that's not a joke. That's true. that's so true, because yeah. quiet is being kept. The Texans actually have the best unit in football right now. That is a boom. Yeah, they have one of the best scoring. rosters on paper for sure. Ooh. So for Lamar great, Jackson and, and, and CJ is a better quarterback than Lamar. I know, but Robo man, get the bleep out of here, man. Lamar Jackson is better than CJ. Uh, is he? No. They're probably going to get to double digit wins before the Cowboys do. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know when to hold them. No when to fold them. You know, I, I can't wait to see what the Cowboys do this year. They didn't make any moves, they owe a lot of people money. I, I can't wait to see this cowboy tragedy. They ought to put that on primetime TV. Just a, a, a reality show. <laughs> I'd love to play poker with the Niners, man. I'd love to get Kyle and Christian and Josh Dobbs and Bosa there. Yeah. See what these guys have. That might be good. Anyway, Casey, let me Sharp see you later on in the week. And, and, and have right, to see you, Casey. Got to have some Casey. All right. Night, fam. You have a blessed night, man. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Case. Same here. And uh, let, us, let us bring them in. They are Big Show's favorite couple, let alone everybody else. It is Donut Denisha. What's going on, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Hey, we are back. <laughs> We are back like the fat girl in the Cadillac to the wheels fall off. How y'all doing? <laughs> and as a matter of fact, using that reference, we lo- we love y'all like a fat li- kid loves cake. <laughs> oh, yeah, Every man. Hey, 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 you got to peach, you got to come back, man. You got to come back. You understand me? Hey, man, how's everybody doing? You know what I'm saying? I hope everybody's doing wine, fine like wine and everything is going cool. You know, but, uh, you know, uh, Rombo, before I get started, I got a couple of things to say. First of all, Mr. Jim Everett and Mr. Rudy, y'all need to stop, Rams fans. Y'all need to stop it, please. There's no way that y'all can uh, even contend in this division. And one thing I like to say that y'all want to say Purdy is trash, uh, Native Dancer is right. Purdy is gold. And Stafford is old. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? And, uh, and, Brock, Purdy, <laughs> and, and Brock Purdy has has beat that horned butt how many times since he's been had lost to him a game yet? Yet he's trash. You know they they the boy they are confused. <laughs> hey, they they oh. they so confused. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, yeah, hey man, you know whatever y'all doing out there, man, I don't even want none of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. you no. Know, because it, 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 if it ain't, it ain't good for the head, it'll make you dead, man. Come on, man. I, they got some yes, different kind do, of stuff man. down in L.A. Oh. Man, hey, Rambo, you know, uh, they uh, got they spent all that money on that uh, SoFi Stadium. They only own half of it. And more importantly, no matter what I noticed says, over the uh, Yeah, I, and I noticed over the winter time, why people inside, if it's supposed to, why people inside being there be with coats and stuff. That place is a stadium with just a little t- a piece of tarp over it. They can't even cover the sides to keep people warm. You understand <laughs> me? It's not even a real dome. I mean, come on, man. We understand the design. It looked cute. It was all right. But as I do deeper into it, man, come on, man. It's not all that. It's not. No, 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 no. Let's continue on with the Niners, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yes. But, yeah. but you know what, though? far as the Brandon IU situation, yep. uh, on one hand, I hope everything do work out. But on the other hand, I said it in the past, ladies and gentlemen, we want to keep everybody, but we can't keep everybody. You know what I'm saying? And all we can do is, you know, replace the people that we lose as far as injury or trade or do the free agency with somebody that could do just as good or a little bit better. And my man, uh, Big Show, was right. You know what I'm saying? If we, there's some kind of way we can get that man worthy, the fastest dude with hands, or somebody just as fast, yeah. that'll be great for Brock Purdy. And I'll yeah. tell you why. Many occasions, Brock Purdy fired that cannon fresh off injury and overthrew many of our receivers. Yeah. We need a receiver that's going to run, run, run. If it's too long, they can go get it. If they over outrun it, they can adjust to the ball 
and catch it in their lap and go for the touchdown. I know, That's right? what we need. I keep gentlemen. wondering why people call that and, noodle arm. I said noodle arm. Brock Purdy throws oh, over the no. head of receivers every now and then. I don't know about noodle arm. The receivers need to pick it up a little man, bit. Man, noodle, hey, noodle arm my ass. You understand me? <laughs> yeah. If that's noodle arm, if that's noodle arm, it's not the cup of noodles. It's not even a Thai yeah. ramen. It's that good. It's that good, expensive Japanese fold. You understand me? That <laughs> clears your soul. That stretch like a rubber band. You see how the way they made it? You understand me, man? It goes big and it comes right back, baby. It's not gonna break. It's not gonna ecstatic. It's not. It, man, it's going elastic and it's going to do his thing ladies and gentlemen and, and all he's going to do is get stronger this season exactly Whoa. that arm was healing up last year in heal mode all season long probably now that arm's fully healed he's training look out look out yes and uh ladies and gentlemen please don't worry about the drafts Please don't worry about the draft. Because like I said before, John Lynch going to take out that pimp hat like he do. He's going to get that big old school black book like he do. He's going to put on a nice suit like he do. And he's going to get into the war room and understand what we need. What do we need to uh, 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 get as far as to be contenders and stay contenders? Because our window is not closing, ladies and gentlemen. It's just other teams yeah. is trying to compete to get with us. We still run the NFC. We're going to crack that code. Somebody's going to crack that code if it's not us with Patrick Mahomes and the crew. I'm not worried no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And what I last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, to get off all this trade and give you a big distraction, if you guys haven't noticed, there's been big talks around that they <laughs> which I'm excited about. The new upcoming, this new upcoming hard knocks. Is going to feature not only one team, but they're going to feature a whole division. So I hope they do NFC West because the 49ers has been shut out of this for many, many years. There's been many teams that have been on there twice. Let's you, get up on there so we can see but, behind but, and what's going on. Don't you know the 49ers? They, they they didn't want to be on there. Remember two three years ago they got they got approached before we became a force, mm -hmm. and Kyle didn't want. To oh be on yeah. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but if they pick the NFC West, they can't hide no more. <laughs> we got to see what's going on in the background so it can get us more fun. excited, you know? Yeah, I agree. That would be really dope. Let me see who get traded. Let me see who earn the spots. Let me see who get knocked off or whatever because they wasn't working too hard to see their reaction. Because, you know, on one side, John Lynch don't play, but let's see how he reacts behind closed doors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that will be interesting. Cussing people out. <laughs> I wonder if they make them be careful of the language. They, well, they bleep it, I guess. Uh, oh, you already know. You know what I'm saying? Mean? You already know. But I want to see, you know, the in-depth and what's going on. I want to see the recovery of Mr. Greenlaw. I want to see uh, the upcoming and the uprising player. And I also want to see my favorite thing on Hard Knocks, what me and Tanisha always talk about, the Ricky Talent Show. <laughs> uh, you know, that's always a good time, ain't it? Oh, you gotta love man, it. You gotta love it. man, it cracks us up all the time, man. You know, just entertainment all around. Something to distract us from losing that Super Bowl and to get on our high horse and get ready for next year, yeah, baby. Because, it's because we're, we're, we're gonna be ready. We're yeah. gonna be ready. Well, fam, we gonna go. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm, unless something goes crazy, while I'll, I'll probably see you this weekend. All right, we get ready for this. That'd draft, be man. nice. All right. Hey, if we don't call in, ladies and gentlemen, we always watching and listening. And we Let's put it that way, baby. D&T is, is in the house. All right. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> in some right. shape, way of fashion. Right, that's John. right, baby. Always, always. Yes. Everybody be safe and enjoy what's to come. Yes, indeed. Appreciate you, Denise. That's so, so true. All right, John. Definitely. Have a great night. I look forward to hearing from you shortly. You too, Bamba. Thanks, You man. too. Thank you. Thanks, fam. Bye-bye. Bye. Night, y'all. And it's let's it all star Luna. I'll talk to you in a while. Refs need to call holding. Casey had a few holes, but O line was the biggest. You know, because the only time they really called the game when Tom Brady and uh, and the Bucks played against Casey, man, they had the whole field was just yellow, flags all day. I never seen a team get flags so much. But that's Tom Brady. The refs, oh, no. That's all right, Chiefs. We got to call that offensive holding today. And they ran Patrick and company off the damn field. 
Also, thanks, Phil. Hey, hey, Tony. Hey, Rambo. Tony. <laughs> well, here we go, Tony. We're sitting here in April, and there's no April first is over, and uh, there was no signing of Brandon Ayew. Of course, I had a feeling that was going to be the case. But uh, you know, I, I would. We we one two three. Let's see, let's see. We this is a fourth or fifth year in a row. We have to sit around and wait for the 49ers to wait until everybody in the league gets signed. So I said, you know what? The time has finally come, and I, I hopefully I'm wrong. But then again, some people are pointing out how this is going to be staggered out. The 49ers might be able to sign Brandon Ayuk and not cripple themselves like I thought. Unless they do want to play the luxury tax. <laughs> I couldn't understand. How are you going <laughs> to sign him? I mean, you got to sign Brock next year. How are you going to sign Brandon Ayuk to $30 million? So, Tony, I figured draft night would be that point of inf- inflection. Oh, you never know, Ron. I mean, if they sign him, they owe him what, $15 million? If they don't sign yeah, him? Yeah, if they don't sign him, that's, that's the cap hit anyway. Right. So, if but if they sign money, him, save money. Exactly, they can knock it down, stretch it out, backload it, whatever they do, and make it about eight or nine million for right? next year. Yeah. So if that was me, I'd be signing him, offering him a deal now before right. everybody else right. offers. And then we get the same scenario we do all the time: you pay him out more than everybody else. When you've had a chance to squint, sneak in there in the cover of darkness and, and you know. Get it done. No. You get it done at, you know, at a reasonable price. But, you know, the four hours are really weird. But, but they, they, they have priorities. Right now, if anybody were to ask them, they would candidly tell you, uh, not concerned right now as a draft. We're not really concerned about the needs of Brandon and IU, but we will get back to him. Uh, so, Kyle, you know what? This is what the problem is. You know, you, you guys could save money if you'd stop assing yeah. around with those contracts. Why do you do that? Uh, That's who, who the hell knows. But whatever it is, Rombo, it doesn't seem to work at the end of the year, does it? <laughs> Barely. I mean, you know. <laughs> we still can't get over the line. The time's coming too, Tony. You know how we kick these 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 contracts down the road, spread it out over a, a fifty year period. You know it's going to end up happening. These guys are going to have to be paid if they leave. Yeah, but see, early and that cap dead cap. Go ahead, right, chill. Look, look what we've done with with Eric Armstead. Look and what look what Bill Walsh used to do. What what was Bill Walsh used to say? Get rid of them before they get better than yeah. get rid of them a year earlier yeah. than a year too late. <laughs> Right? So you get rid of them. If we would have traded, uh, say, Eric last year, <sighs> you would have got a couple of picks for him. Yeah, like you did DeForest Buckner. Well, we got right? a pick for DeForest. It was a first-round pick. This, That's the last time we got a first-round pick. This year. Nobody does that this anymore. This year, what do we do? We've, we've got nothing. So, you know, like I understand when people like Big Show and Papa Dragon come in and talk you know, about things like that. And I, my mind always goes back to what Bill Walsh said. It's better to trade, you know, trade them a year earlier well, while they're still worth something. Yeah. I mean, and you just got to bite money. the bullet. And you've got to know your strengths and your weaknesses, what, what um, you know, what positions the team are, are really, really strong at recruiting or teaching or breeding, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they're the ones you can trade in and out, left left and right. See you later, buddy. We've got two, the first and the second for you. Off you go. And, then, and that's the end of that. And everybody else is bumbling and grumbling all over the night. <laughs> and the 49ers can give a rat's ass. They continue moving on like nothing happened. So... I and- mean, there's a running back that they signed that I had a look at. And I thought, very yeah. interesting. I like this dude. Yeah, it, I don't know what his name is, but he's six three, two hundred and thirty three pounds. His big, solid base. You know what I mean? So I, I was looking ten yards that. out. Just, you you know, hand him the ball ten yards out. He's going to be extremely hard to stop. Well, the thing is, they're going to use it for the kickoff return. I bet. You know, as a rule change, him and Debo are going to going to vie for that position. 
because uh, he's bigger. He's bigger, Debo. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. But but Debo's still a house on fire when he's running down the street. So you know, I I, I want to see him be as good as Debo actually, because Debo's this is what he does. I saw I was telling somebody a little while ago. You know, Debo might be okay in the, in the rugby league. So the way he runs out with reckless abandon down the field, you know, he's not going to tackle anybody for you. But once you give him the ball, look out for Debo. My God, he's scary. Yeah, yeah. You got you got to put him in the position. Um, yeah, to, you to win. Yeah. yeah, win that battle. You know what I mean? Debo, once he gets going, you can't oh, expect yeah. Debo to run through tackles straight off the mark. You know what I mean? He's got to build up speed. Yeah. But once he gets going and he's at full speed, That's very a hard to bring down. Bowling ball. Yeah. yeah, extremely hard to bring down. But that's, you know, I don't know what... Um, what else is oh, I forgot what I was going to say? Yeah. No, we we're, were talking about the draft and what what activities might take in because everybody I I don't know if anybody doesn't want an offensive lineman. I was waiting for that argument to take place tonight. Well, what would you have us do in the first round, Tony? O line. Yeah. It's a no brainer. I I think so. I I just wonder how Brandon Ayuk is affecting the thinking in, in the front office, and would they be looking for this? This is a wide receiver rich draft. Will the 49ers try to go get a blue chip kid uh, out of the draft, or will they go ahead and get the offensive lineman like they need to do? Well, uh, it's you can sort of like fix that problem by asking a simple question. If Brock Purdy goes down or gets injured because of lack of protection, who's next? The wide receiver's not going to matter. Exactly. Uh, Joshua. Is <laughs> next? <laughs> Could have been Trey Lance, which, who yeah. knew the system, but you know we won't go there. Well, we got a rocket sciences now back there, so you know. Yeah, well, that should please yeah. Kyle tremendously, because <laughs> Kyle, him and Josh can sit around and can talk about things. And listen, Josh, can I talk to you? Because I can't talk to the rest of the guys about this stuff, but I know you've got the intellect to handle this. Let's look at this and tell me if you see anything wrong with it. I'm really open to whatever you have to say. Hey, Kyle, knock it off. The rest of those guys can comprehend it. You just didn't want to run it. You know? <laughs> Still, this, this, this guy might be this guy might be the first dude that will not get redshirted Dogs. the first time he comes onto the team because he's a rocket sci- a rocket scientist. <laughs> yeah. He might even Kyle might even ask him about <laughs> thrust and uh, thrust <laughs> vectors and things like that. And this guy might even Resistance. say to Kyle, "Look." If you want to lighten up Debo's ass a little bit, just pump him full of, um, what do you call it? What's that thing they use for balloons? Yeah, uh, is that helium? <laughs> yeah. Helium, yeah. yeah. That'll, that'll lighten him up. <laughs> just, Tony, got, just put a valve on it, you know, and before he runs down to the field, just go pump it, it, him up. It, 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 and also teach him how to do table push-ups. Push away. Push away. And that running, away. that running back combo, I think, I think maybe if he gets a chance to come on the field, I'd love to see him uh, play. Yeah, he, we'll I see think the preseason. He might be a replacement for uh, what's his name, Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, if he can stay healthy, they'll look at him. Tell him we're gonna go. I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, I'll look for you later on in the week. I always can't wait to hear from you. So, uh, meanwhile, have a great, great week. Unless something crazy goes. And we'll see Ben Ayuk though. We'll be doing coming in here early to see what that is about. What? We yeah. we need to sign the kid, you know. We we need him. We need him. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. We no, we do need agree. him. Agreed. And he's not past his prime, so not, he's just getting into it. All right, Tony. Yeah. Cheers, my man. All right, brother. Cheers, mate. Shout out to Evan Ellis, Big Show, Papa Dragon, and the rest of the crew and see you in the next one. Can't wait. Good night, Tony. Or good day, Tony. He's just Cheers, mate. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. And let's go right, check out Tony ATL. You know what? I you know what, Tony? I, thought, I, used to, I think Chris Hansen used to be a 49er fan. That's another clown show. You know, the Rams, they kill me. They have nothing else to do but take names and come in and def, def, defame uh, people who used to come in. Chris Hansen, we know that's not. Yeah, Rambo, I already said that's <laughs> what a fake Chris Hansen. What a clown. He's talking all crazy. Oh, so, tribe yeah. this, tribe. Tribe sucks. Get out of here with that. You're not Chris Hansen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> exactly. 
that that's that's a fake Chris Harrison. So oh, no doubt. I've already called him out uh, about being a bum. So you he's know. not even doing a good and job. Chris Hansen, you said I'm scared to call in. Where are you at, <laughs> fake Chris Hansen? Here I am. You said I'm scared to call in. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, anyway, Tony, this was so. Hey, Rambo, did you see my comment about ten minutes ago? I put I was talking about are you. I said, well, I asked Niner Empire, but nobody responded. What would you think about uh, the draft day trade? Because y'all are in the same situation. Um, Brandon Ayuk to Cincinnati. Brandon Ayuk and a fourth-round pick for T. Higgins, and y'all get a fifth-round pick. Oh! Hey, but you know what's so funny? Because T. Higgins, I'm not sure. What is T's problem in signing? Because – the Bengals are holding on to their money so they can pay Chase next year, right? So, it's, uh, I don't know what it's T wants. the same situation. Want? Yeah, T wants, okay. T wants the, the multi-year deal. They, they're willing to pay him. They franchise him, and he's mad about the franchise. For the one-year 21, he wants the multi-year. T Higgins coming out of the slot is a machine. Boy, that, ooh, that boy's good. I'll take T Higgins in a heartbeat. Yep. And he's tall. Long man, you can't miss T. Coming through, he scared me so bad. Every time the 49ers played the Bengals, I said, "Man, Jamar is go get a bomb here and there." I could accept that, but T. Higgins will kill you all day long. God. Yeah, yeah, all day long. Yeah. yeah so, what what do you think about that? It'd be like an even swap. Y'all give up a fourth round pick, but y'all get a fifth round pick in return. What do you think about that? I take that, but you know what, Tony? I think a lot of teams. Um, are, are bluffing. The Bengals don't want to get rid of T. The 49ers don't want to get rid of Brandon Ayuk either. But they got to make it look like, okay, well, you know what? We're, we're having problems here. So if you call in, you make a deal, I have a feeling the 49ers are hang up. And I got a feeling Cincinnati hang up as well. You know, Because like they always say, uh -huh. unless we get a deal that just blows us off the table, uh, we're probably not going to be interested. And they say that every year about somebody. But they didn't do that with Trey. <laughs> Jerry Jones called it. Give you fourth down. Yeah. Done. What? Really? That easy. So if they really like you, they're not going to do it. Tells me about how they. Yeah, because the because the uh, the smoke has been blowing at us starting since Thursday. Uh, what, what, what this actually happened, but I still think it's smoke behind it's a smoke screen. The uh, Falcons called in uh, quarterback Michael Penix of Washington for another workout, and man, YouTube they blew up. Mm -hmm. Falcons going to draft Michael. No, we're not going to draft Michael Penix. <laughs> we're going to trade back and get Michael Penix. That could happen, but I don't think so. I still think that we're going to get a defensive player like a Dallas Turner, the edge Dallas Turner out of Alabama at eight. But um, yeah, our you, second round pick, Michael Penix, won't be there in the second round. So anyway, I don't think we. I was going to say, is Penix going to be any first round pick? Anyway, you don't. You, if you're going to get a get a kid at a second or third round and let him sit behind Kirk, if he's all that, you know. Uh, Actually, I think Denver, Denver, or the Ra the Raiders gonna take Penix at uh, but Denver picks fourteen, thirteen. He's gonna go around twelfth to fourteen somewhere around there. We yeah. won't be able to get him, so because yeah. we, we picked earlier. Well, you you might not want to get him either because every year we see quarterbacks coming out. I mean, Golden Boys coming out of school, right? And then a few weeks later, I think, try to remember some names from the last two years of first round picks. He, and, and what's the name's going to be an afterthought next year if he has another year like this year? Uh, the kid that went over to the Panthers was hailed. And, 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 and right now, the Panthers are kicking themselves because they could have picked CJ up. They picked up Bryce. Sure could have. They picked up Bryce. Yep. Every team like I told there. you, all I can see was that, that championship game tape against Georgia. I thought CJ was the best quarterback in the draft. I still stand Even on then? that. Yeah. And now look what happened. And usually, like these last two or three years, like you said about quarterbacks, like about like the year that uh, Trey Lance and all of them came out, how many quarterbacks panned out? One. Trevor In the following year, really none, because that's the year that um, that uh, uh, Desmond Ritter and all of them, that was yeah. a bad year. Then the following year, which was last year, one. Yep. So and usually you, like one or two. And what was that? You told me about that kid that went to Tennessee that year, that second year. Uh, you said he wasn't any good. Yeah. And lo and behold, is he yeah. still in the league? Um, 
He's still in the league. Malik, he's still he's Malik. the only one that didn't get traded from the twenty twenty two draft. <laughs> <laughs> he, they, you can't quarterback. get anybody to trade for him. You like, if you don't want to cut him loose, he's yeah, just the river got traded. Um uh, uh, the guy from Pittsburgh, I forgot his name. Pickett, he got traded. Desmond Ritter got traded. And um, the guy from Washington got traded. Those are Sam Howell. I think he's a good backup quarterback. He played decent in Washington. He's going to be good for Seattle as a backup. This is why Trent Baalke, people got on Trent Baalke because in the first round, Trent Baalke stuck to strictly defense. And Trent Baalke got to the point after we picked Picked that wide receiver that turned into absolute trash. Oh, his name is Casey. But we don't even draft. We Trent Baalke would not draft anything but defensive players in the first round. I said people got mad. Mm-hmm. Well, reason mm-hmm. Trent, Trent doesn't know how to draft offensive players. That's Jenkins. AJ J. Boy AJ. Everybody tell me you looked at. AJ, what the hell are you doing, man? Oh, I yeah, I remember him. I'm I'm the him first round above. pick, man. Oh no. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this goes on and on all over the league. It's not just us. It's all all the league people picking first round. Oh yes, yeah, yes. And taking a terrible whipping. Yeah. So. So, I feel I, I feel I was talking to them on the Falcons chat the other night about our 2017 first round pick, uh, defensive end Tack McKinley out of UCLA. I didn't understand <laughs> the pick at the time. He's out of the league now. <laughs> went to you Dallas, know. did nothing. Went to Cleveland, did nothing. Matter of fact, you guys signed him. him. Yeah, we get him for a few minutes. Him. Yeah, yeah. you got released him. Yeah, because Tack, like he did the yeah, draft he night, he brought a man. picture of his grandmama in there into the 49 locker room. And yeah. <laughs> Tack. Tack. Let me and talk you know, to you. Rambo, that's all hype. I don't, I don't like hype players. I know. Don't right? do all that. Do it on the field. Don't tell me what you're going to do and talk talk about it, be about it. Yes, exactly. So, you know. But like like I said, in. that uh, Bill Wall said many, many, many years ago, and before the 1984 NFC Championship game, and I talked to you about this before. Bill Wall said before they shut out the Bears, talking does not win football, oh, football games. games. Yes, because if it did, Deion Sanders would have been like, who was that? An <laughs> eight-time first... Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deion Sanders. Man, when I think about Dion, man, Dion was talking trash even before it was fashionable in the NFL. I remember Jerry Rice would be sitting there looking off in the distance while De- you see Dion's mouth just working him, working him, working him. I said, <laughs> mm-hmm. look at Jerry. Jerry's not paying any attention to Dion. Dion's mouth is running 100 miles an hour. Dion, I ain't going to work on Jerry. They had some epic battles, but still, you know, He's Deion Sanders. But all the reason Deion won those two Super Bowls because he was a bounty hunter. He went right. and signed with y'all for a year, then signed, then signed with the enemy, the Cowboys, the following year. Smart move on his part. You go to the team that yeah, already yeah. has a little bit of lean in that direction, and Deion was smart enough to know all they needed was him. Unfortunately, he was right because I hate yeah. that kind of guy. But Deion went over to King San Francisco. Yeah, we go win this Super Bowl, and he did. He was, and went over to Dallas. Yeah, uh-huh. we go win this Super Bowl, and he did. Damn it. You know, another smart move y'all made that 94 season, he was a great player, too. You, you probably forgot, but I'm going to tell you his name. He's a Hall of Famer. Remember y'all signed Richard Dent that 94 season to Richard the defensive man from the Bears? Cowboy. Hey, He started out good, too. He Dent's had like about Cowboys. three or four sacks, then he got hurt. Yeah. No, he he went to the Niners. Wait. He played for the Bears. Didn't, didn't the Cowboys have a guy named Dent? They used to dunk the field bowl over the over the crossbar all the time. Not that I'm aware of. I don't remember. That dude was a badass, but he was an idiot. <laughs> he can boy, he can play. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Richard Dent. Okay. Yeah, Richard Dent got hurt in that Kansas, the Joe Montana game, the Kansas City game. Tore up his knee, so he didn't get a chance to finish the season with y'all. But he had got off to a good start with y'all that year. Oh, Hall so, of many, Famer. so many times that story. The one I'm talking about did not make the Hall of Fame, so yeah, it's got to be a different guy. Tony, I'm, so Rambo, who who are y'all going to draft on draft? Are y'all still thinking of offensive lineman or corner? You know, first round. It, it, it's going to have to be an offensive lineman because if they, they don't, everybody's going to be mad as hell. So we'll see. So, Tony, are you trading up? I think so. You know, maybe. 
but not far because the 49ers can't afford to pay a first round pick too much. Which we're gonna go because right. yeah, we're, we're a minute and a yep. half over. So let me, let me we 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 gotta get there. <laughs> you and I be talking about all over the league, so it's always fun. It takes too quick though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me let me see you this weekend and possibly this week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, yeah, you guys got eleven or twelve picks. We got Ten. eight picks, so right. we'll, we'll talk some more football towards the weekend. All right, all right, Tony. Appreciate you. Have a great night. All right, have a good night, sir. Thanks, Tony. Take care. You too. Yeah. Look at what Mosey on. What's your intent? American football. I thought I could have swore that was that loudmouth dude. From, all right. Anyway, fam, I'm going to go ahead and check out. Appreciate you tonight, fam. Always as usual. Don't forget to subscribe so we can get you those notifications. Come on in and join us and call in. The numbers and information to get in here is always listed at the base of the screen or in the description. <laughs> I hit like. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to see it somewhere between now and this weekend, possibly, but most likely this weekend as we get more serious, geared up for the draft. All right. Meanwhile, dreams, red and gold, fam. We got this. We're going to be okay. Niner! Oh, 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 oh,